What's going on guys, it's your boy Jack, aka The Balding Reefer, coming at you today's video, which is the start of the new polytunnel system, which is going up down the farm. Uh, what's the date today? 27th, 29th? 29th of July. Obviously, you guys are watching this through winter, because you know, it's obviously cold and dark now, and probably raining outside, so we thought we'd give you some summer content during the winter. You know how it is. Uh, but if this kind of content interests you, and you want to follow the expansion plans along, do me a favour, swipe up around here, or here, you're going to see my subscribe button. Hit that, and hit the old bell notification. That way, you get to see all the weird and wonderful stuff that we are up to. Now, we've been talking about this for a while. We did buy um two polytunnels uh we spent just shy of ten thousand pounds on two polytunnels however these ones actually come up available through auction these were six grand including the vat so uh an angel investor um from the farm actually turned around and said look we'll, we'll get these for you so sent the other ones back and we've got these but let me spin you around and show you exactly what we've got for six grand let's go so, starting from the front, we've got one, two, three, four, five. All these actually all interlink into one another and then goes up and over. So, all these side bits here will be open. We're going to have two for the general sales area. I mean, <clears throat> it's ridiculous in size. But they literally go together like Lego. All the paving slabs are coming up with us as well. So, we've got Kayla Mears working all summer. So, you will see on, on some of the videos. That's April's younger brother. Um, basically, anything that's left in here, we can take. These side pieces here are actually on wired rollers. So you can actually slide them down to uh, get to the green stuff there to be able to actually give us a little bit of airflow. We've got the drainage systems on top, which you can actually use that to harvest some rainwater. Um, so again, saving the planet and all that jazz. Um, we're just over here now. Obviously, Daniel... He's over here, channel link above and in the video description down below for him. Um, but yeah, it's literally all interconnects into one. Obviously, we've got the vents up on the side there, which we can separate the quarantine area from the general sales area. And then we've got these like, little cool sliding doors that go in between. Kane's going to be taking all the slabs up because we're going to be reusing all these, jet washing them off, getting them on down the farm. We're going to be taking... This black top with us as well. Obviously, there's extra polytunnel bits here as well. Um, but pretty much anything that's in here, we can literally go ahead and take with us. Um, Size-wise, we're running at 6.5 metres across um, by probably about 45 metres in length. Um, so, yeah, we've got a lot of stuff to take down, to be fair. But in the grand scheme of things, it shouldn't actually be that difficult to take down because all it is... Three bolts on the bottom, three bolts on the top, a bolt up in the middle, three bolts at the top, three bolts at the bottom, and it all comes down. Obviously, it has got electric in here as well at the minute, so we just need to be a little bit careful when we're taking that down, so we don't electrocute ourselves. But, bands are sparky, so you can take all that sort of things down. But let's get to cracking, and let's get taking some of this down. Let's go! Okay, so... He's having a quick break while Stanny and Kane are on the arg a bit. Um, what we're actually deciding to do now is build our section 21 in here. This will be one of the um, show places where the shop will be open. And this will be too. So what we're going to do is actually, in theory, from the front doors here, all the way through to the back will actually sit at about 35 meters so we've got this whole board what we now need to do is measure six and a half meters across here at the back and then just pile in another 15 holes so how we're actually connecting some more things come away from the radio, because I'm not allowed to play radio tunes on YouTube. But in theory, this is exactly how the whole system will work. You have three poles. This one here is the drainage line. This one here is the archway. The front doors obviously have all the supporting braces and stuff like that, but obviously you've, uh, you've seen us rip all this down now. 
obviously my fans galore at the minute. You've seen us rip all this down now. So I thought I'd draw the video to a close on this one. So it's been uh, quite a long video at this point. But that's the route we've decided to go down for cost saving in the first year. Because, I mean, thinking logically for once, which I know is unusual for me, we're going to kill ourselves to put all five in and cover all five. Two are going to sit empty for now. We need to get the section 21 up, which I'll go into greater detail on exactly what a section 21 is. And then we will have two shop areas in here. So where you've got the poles in the middle, you'll actually be able to walk through and see everything. We've got some still shipping containers going over the back. And eventually we're going to have another polytunnel back down the back here. But obviously the, the Arga draw bit, it's 150 quid. Because you have to leave a £50 deposit for the weekend. Obviously we need it for a lot longer than what we've got it at the moment. So what we might as well do for now is let's get the bits up that we need. Because I mean, it's like these steel pipes here that come out of the ground. For 60 of them, it's 550 quid plus the VAT. So it's a fair old expense. And at least then when you guys come down, you'll see things be changing constantly and the whole place will be adapting and changing. Look at these bear on that now. Another episode of putting up the polytunnel systems. It's currently September 3rd. I'd say it's an overcast morning. It's nice and chill, chill. Do you know what I mean? Like there's not much heat in the air or anything like that. So plan of action today is I want to get some of these drainage lines in. So let me spin you around. So not going to be up here all day or anything like that. Uh, I've got cinemas with the twins a little bit later on. So what I need to do is these individual circles here, I need to actually get these and put another one on here and then literally attach on the flat drainage runs, which in essence will go straight through here and sit onto that rung there. What that will then enable me to do is actually go ahead and start fitting in the guttering rails. So guttering rails are here. So I need to take out these bolts that are in here because this is what actually holds down the actual polytunnel system. And then we need to go ahead and whack out some of the, uh, you know, I'm not sure the rust that's in there, uh, but that's the plan for today. The guy that's doing the shoot at the farm, obviously this here, by the way, just an FYI, it's going to be a dog run pen that we've, that, that's, uh, we've had installed. Um, but I need to actually install these straight uprights, which what I need to do is go get a string through that hole there, come vertical all the way down, so I can actually post bore those in, which in turn will interlock the front, which will then enable me to go ahead and actually start putting in these straight pieces all the way down the middle. But that's gonna be fun because it's a little bit out of kilter, but we'll get there in the end. Do not worry, folks, do not worry. Uh, I've got a temporary pole in there, just see how that goes, but just walking along the edge and using the van as a, <laughs> um, as a trolley dolly to be able to get through, but all the outer rings are now in place. All of the drainage runs are now in place as well. These two front struts are now in place. All the drainage runs on here are in place. All the drainage runs on the outside are all in place. And these hoops are in place. I've bored out the two hole bits at the front. The pole bore it off the shoot guy over the back. Pretty cool. So now I've just got to get the last two supporting poles in there. Uh, and then it's just a matter of going through, putting in some of the supporting noggins that's on the side and stuff. But productive day so far. Six meter bassins here. Sprayed in this one for a six meter bassin hit. And then we sprayed this one for a six meter basin here. Um, filtration wise, we're gonna be doubling up on these. There'll be two bottom drains put in the bottom. There'll be, <coughs> excuse me, one bio chamber here, another bio chamber here, same as here, same as there, same as there, and same as the other side as well. Uh, so I've got uh, Lindsay, who's an old colliery miner. Um, you should go down into the pits. Uh, he's a fantastic digger driver. So he's basically going to sit his digger in the middle um, 
and then literally start scraping it all back and put all the spoil up onto the edge. Uh, these are going to go 500 mil deep. But let me snap back to in a sec. Okay, so before Lindsay actually comes up on the digger, uh, I'm putting in all of my drainage runs today. Um, what I'm having to do is, I'll show you on those ones over there in a second, but basically these have got uh, wooden strips that go all the way down, pilot hole through, and then you basically wrap the pilot tunnel in size and then proceed to cover it up over the top. What I'm doing at the moment though, just to hold these in is because you do have to lean on it to get it to go in, because like I say, it does hold it in really tight, is I need to continue to take the bits out which again i'll jump down there in a second because i have to position them all the way along and then drop the bolts through um, and then get my impact drive out that's down there and my 13 mil so i can actually then go ahead uh, and actually connect these all into play as you'll look down there at the minute they are all stepping all over the place so again, we will be lifting those up in due course and whatnot and making them all level and set. Okay, so we've got uh, Big Lindsay on the digger. Um, so he's just positioning himself at the back there now so we can start raking it all back. Uh, we're only going about a foot, a foot and a half down. Um, we just want to be able to sort of lock in the bottom of the basin so it sits in nice and round. But what that will enable me to do then later on is literally get in here with a spade, wheelbarrow, and just start literally grading it all off. Um, but yeah, absolutely motoring. There is a dumper truck somewhere uh, on the farm which I need to go up and get so we can actually start scooping it in and, and loading it all into there. But he's... Uh, Lindsay's just going to start moving it all around the back for me now and then we'll use the front of the scoop then to be able to push it all flat enough. But what I need to do now is go ahead and start moving all this stuff out here, get all the rope out so I can clear that out of the way for him because it should only take him, to be fair, about two, three hours to dig them bassins in. And then we're absolutely motoring. Let's go. Using the uh, the dumper truck to uh, load up all the spool that's coming out of here. On this one, all I've got to do is fine fettle shave with a shovel, get it nice and straight, rake it back, and then actually go ahead and whack a plate it to get it nice and flat. Um, and then at that point, what we'll do is we'll put a sand bottom in there so we can make sure it is nice and uh, real smooth. And then we can go ahead and put the bassins in there. But for the time being, we're going to keep mowing ahead with this. Um, <clears throat> real sort of simple technique, really. Sear it with the wheel. All right, you go forward, reverse, and you've got your levers here on the side. Uh, one accelerator, no brake. That's it. Let's go. Same as on this one here. And then same as on this one here. But Lindsay's done a great job, to be fair, of leveling it off. He really is a very skilled gentleman. You see when my white line is there, that's why I need to shave those edges in. But a couple of hours every night should get these done. Whacker plated off. And we should be all good, because this stuff at the minute, like I say, is literally rock hard. So, shaving all those edges, get the bassins up here, get those dropped in. Um, desperately need to get them up in there. Okay, so previously when you seen me, I was whizzing up and down here on a dumper truck. <laughs> All's done, let me spin you around. Let's go. Okay, so obviously this hole's dug, this hole's dug. And this here is the basin that's going in the back. That round basin there, believe it or not, starts off as steel sheeting, just like this. Now, these are XMOD, Ministry of Defence Water Storage Containers. Um, we imported these over from Poland, so the Yashiki Goy Farm bought them from the MOD, shipped them to Poland, used, I think, seven. And then there's the other three that were left over. So I've re-bought them from the farm in Poland and had them reshipped back to the UK by the same company that dropped them off in the first place. Um, so all they are is they've got these holes in um, that we put in M10 nuts all the way through. So as you can see on the drop down over there at the back, obviously they're all in that little piece there just, just needs tacking in. Uh, we've got staff now. <laughs> we've got Kyle and we've got Ian. Making their, uh, well, Carl's not making his debut, but Ian is. 
Um, but the, the vat's actually six, six meters across, um, so there will be in the region uh, of about 60,000 liters of water. Um, as you can see now, all we need to do is just knock these back a little bit. But you can see the perfect curvature all the way around. We need to make sure it does sit perfectly in because we've got to get one more panel uh, in there just yet. Uh, so this here from this point all the way up to the back does sit at six meters. But all we'll do is we'll go ahead and get the sledgehammer and just start knocking the bottoms in just to make sure it really, really is sort of pulling in to the sides. Okay, so we've got Joseph in his technical dream coat uh, all over the bottom of the pond. Uh, Carl's just finished watching the last little bit. I've cut my bloody finger open. Um, so yeah, time to get the liner now from that box in here. Plan is put it in the middle, fold it out, unroll it back, put it over the sides and then slowly fetch it in. And then hopefully, by that oak tree over there, which is that one, there's actually a water source bump there. So we'll get that on. I'll get bumping it full of water. Let's go. Okay, so liner's in. A lot of slack on the outside. Pull the majority of the base in nice and flat. Uh, there's a water source over there, which I've just been down to get 150 meters of hose piping for. Now it's not 150 meters from that tree. However, I do have to get all the way to the end of the basin. So we've got that in. Just feeding the troops now. Steak, kidney and chips and gravy, boy. And then I've got a uh, chicken mushroom pie, chips and gravy as well. Ian didn't want none because his missus already made his packed lunch for him. Good lad. So, snap back to you in a second. When we're getting this bad boy filled. Let's go. Wham bam, thank you ma'am. 60,000 litres filtered on two Nexus 320s. You can tell Carl's been watching James Coy Whisperer. He's just screaming, thank you mother for the rabbits. So if you're watching Coy Whisperer, there you go, sunshine. Fans everywhere. Let's go. Okay, so the third basin uh, is now in. We've got it carpeted. Uh, just need a little bit more carpet down on this bit here. Then we can end that bit down there. And actually go ahead and actually get the liner in. What we're going to do is drop uh, sort of two tonne of sand in here uh, as well uh, over the top of the carpet, screed it all nice and level, uh, and then go ahead and uh, do the big fill. Um, this one here uh, is looking okay. It's around half a foot out on the water level uh, at the moment. But again, what we're going to do is we're going to fine fit all the back there just to sort of knock the uh, the high edge in now it's full of water to be able to really sort of get that level nice and set uh and then this one here as well uh again now uh, is uh up and running um again same principle just need to go over the back and knock the high level out now the uh, level's in if you like this kind of content do me a favor swipe up you see my subscribe button there hit that hit the all bell, uh, all bell notification that way you're gonna get to see all the weird and wonderful content that i'm up to You'll notice I'm back on the digger. Three mistakes have cost me thousands. Uh, originally, this hole here, as I've explained on different videos, was supposed to be dug with the digger, but it was done on the bulldozer, which is just there. Um, in turn, completely ruined what I wanted to do, so I'm now having to re get the digger back out, which has cost me money to rehire that. Uh, it's cost me money for the original digger driver that did that. And because we're in such a rush on these, let me spin you around. We're about a foot out of kilt out for where we want to be on that back corner over there. So in turn, what I need to do is drain this off. And this one's even worse. About a foot and a half out of kilt out on this one. So, plan to fix it. That big pile over there is 15 tonne of sharp sand. What I'm gonna be doing is inside of here, is finding my level, um, getting some of the old railway sleepers all the way along the edge and across the front edge and all the way down across the back edge. Once that's settled, uh, I'm gonna be pulling that over to here and then getting this as flat as I can. In turn, what I'm gonna do then is whack a plate this all down so it's nice and flat. I need to find my highest spot and my lowest spot so I can figure out on average what it's gonna to take to actually fill this because I do not think 15 tons is gonna to be enough and per 15 tons, I'm paying 565 quid. Uh, you can see on this railway sleeper pond that we've got here, 
just how far out it is in places. So in here, I need to board the inside uh, and then go ahead and uh, put some sharp sand in here. Again, whack a bite that down and get that nice and flat. This has still got to come up another uh, two railway seats because it will be 1.4 meters deep. <coughs> so now what I've got to do is literally go ahead, get on my little mini digger and pull all of this waste spoil here into this hole here. In total, I'm estimating it probably cost me in the region have about three and a half thousand pounds. Labour for the lads, tools, time, materials. Walks around went at it like a bit of a bull in a china shop. I mean, these ones aren't necessarily anybody's fault. The ground levelled a little bit, so we need to put that sharp sand down to stop that from happening again. Well, on this video, you'll be fixing all the problems that we've got. Uh, now at this point we should be around seven to ten days outside of the working weekend which is where you guys are going to be coming over uh, there's about six or seven you already that have very kindly offered to donate your time to be able to bring the project back ahead we did discuss it on the live stream um, and we'll give you a, a value so for example if you come over on the Saturday we'll give you a 200 pound value to spend on Koi uh, or if you come over Saturday and Sunday we'll give you a 500 pound uh, to spend if you can just make the Sunday 200 pound value as well uh, we're gonna have all the, all the tools here all the machinery uh, I've got to get ready for my steel shipping containers that are going to be going over there in the corner again all that's going to be explained on this video okay so the next plan of action to avoid another massive mistake is to get a set for the section 23 so I don't know if you can see here but what I've done is I've lined out uh, 10 foot from this post here to this post here now bearing in mind the shipping container is eight foot wide that'll give me half that'll give me one foot either side so it's easy for the wagon drivers and from this post here to that post down there is uh 42 foot because this one's going to be a 40 foot shipping shipping container and then when you come down to this element here this here is where the 20 foot for the section 23 is going to go the reason why I want it situated in place like this is because what I can do then is I can go ahead, I can run some fencing all the way from that back corner down to here and all the way up to here to a very far corner as well. Plus then I've got a little bit of a sorting slash paddock area out where we can get this here nice and flat and we can actually go ahead uh, and lay some flagstones down on here so it is a nice flatted off area uh, that way then in the summer months it enables us to have a bit of a sorting section out here this 40 foot container here the double doors that you see on the front uh, well you can't see at the moment but the double doors that are going to be here uh, are going to be uh, bifold doors that are going to come open or french doors uh, should i say uh, and then down the side here we're going to have three windows all the way down uh, with another doorway putting down the bottom for a toilet facility uh, that can go into there. So this here will be two shipping containers. What I need to do now is now I've roughly pegged it out is mark it exact from where I want it. The reason why I wanted to do this is I'll then be able to bring uh, my polytunnels right the way up to the edge of here, which again, I can leave a slab walkway down the back. But don't forget, I've got to have one polytunnel in here. And then I've got to have uh, another polytunnel uh, on the end as well, which again, the end pretty much finishes, you can see all the way down the bottom, to where that little uh, post there is sticking out the ground. So again, I can then have this all slabbed off here, we can uh, have all the fencing down the bottom, having it all fenced off, and again we can have the little slabbed area here beyond the back, but like I say, all this here will be fenced off. Just goes to show, no matter how fast you're going at something, You've got to have a plan in place and sometimes having the plan in my head doesn't always work the way that I wanted it to. So we've got the boys from Williams Groundworks here a day early. Uh, they're supposed to come down on Saturday and they'll come down today. So for the time being, let's run that B-roll. Let's go. But you 
black and white And I prefer the country to your city Okay, so Daryl's on the digging out. Toby's setting the laser line on there. So what we're gonna do is just grade it all back in nice and flat. And then we're actually gonna dig a trench round all the way on the inside, um, about 150 mil wide. What that'll enable us to do then is put a concrete ring all the way around and then physically situate the, uh, the, the basin on top of that ring which in turn then will stop it flexing, stop it bowing, uh, and will also in turn help you keep it very, very level. So it's just a matter of uh, raking this through and dropping it all in. So the idea is once this base here then sets, uh, we'll be good to go, but we're just gonna carry on putting this bottom drain in now. So I'll snap back to you all in a sec, let's go. Okay, so what we're doing now is we've got the uh, laser level and it's over there, I'm bleeping it socks off. So these guys are just pulling it round now and then every so often we're going round dotting it in. As you can see, we put the bottom drain in there as well. So we've got a six inch four on the bottom drain uh, to make sure that we've got enough downwards flow. Um, but yeah, just going through now and like I say, grading this off. But uh, moving it over by hand because where he's just dropped that load there, we need to go up 10 mil. But uh, the lads were saying that within a couple of hours, this year it will be off and then by tomorrow morning this will be drillable so yeah they're uh, grafters let me tell you but yeah first bottom drain set in obviously we left more than enough gap to be able to get the uh, the flooring uh, by the time we screeded it all back so yeah we are now officially rocking and a rolling let's go uh, this one here, I'm just waiting for the other bottom drains to turn up and then we are going to go ahead to put the bottom drain in here. We're actually situating the pipe level um, because we're going to have a fall on the actual uh, pond itself on the floor of about three inches, which in turn the three inch coming off the wall, coming all the way down to the bottom, the bottom drain, uh, is more than enough then to create a hell of a lot of pull through. And we're going four inch straight from the bottom straight in. Obviously these uh, two bassins here will get pumped out put into here tomorrow we've got to jump up on the uh, big tall ladders and just re-put some of these back in nice and straight obviously there's no supporting rungs in the middle so uh, as you can tell through there so again we've got to put those in when we get these two bastions out we'll then put the supporting rungs in on the top and then obviously we've got to put the drainage lines in as well so we're getting damn damn close now to covering this what we're also going to be doing today which will be happening on a separate video because we're pretty much going to win this one here um, is we're going to be setting out for the other two polar tunnels at the back as well whilst we've got the post borers and the lasers here so we can make sure it's perfectly level these two over the back uh, the next video will show the drawings um, will be their own individual standalone tunnels we can get them built quicker we can get them covered quicker as well which is always a massive massive benefit what we then may do is move this out of here put it inside of one of those polytunnels for the time being because we can get this one on some serious serious heat uh, but other than that it's been an absolute pleasure okay okay same day at the farm different job they let me spin you around so the lads have uh, very kindly dug this out for me uh, what we've done for the time being is originally we we're going to put the nexus at the back but because the ground sits so high we swapped it and we put the channel down here uh, and then again we're going to pour a concrete ring all the way over the top in the next week or so uh, and then again the nexus is going to sit just here uh, on this pad here what the boys are doing over the back now at the minute is staking out for where the heated uh, polytunnel is actually going to be situated in being attacked by a wasp Kane's finally out of breath he was moaning earlier they felt like a spare part feeling spare now mate Told you, grafters, these are our grafters. So, this is now set in. So, this will be one of the first ones that we get covered in. Oh, wicked, the back ones are all set in, ready to rock and roll. These boys really don't mess about. Uh, got a big toe on the, on the uh, string line, turning his back to the camera. <laughs> 
But yeah, we are uh, rocking and a rolling on this one. So this is going to be the heated uh, grow on section that we're going to be doing. So basically what we're probably going to do is take out the railway sleeper point out of here uh, and get it inside of here uh, as a matter of urgency, put the bottom drain in and then get the nexus uh, situated on that. Uh, put the steel poles in tomorrow, lock it all into place and then go ahead uh, and order the cover over the top. We've got the, uh, the Welsh ball version of me uh, just grading back the back for me now over there, getting all that set in. But these guys here now have been in for about three, four hours on these big circular pads. So everything's sort of fine along. We're trying to make the use of the concrete uh, before it actually starts to go off, but still got a lot of workable play left in that. Got the bottom drains coming over tomorrow morning for these. I mean, Kane will be here tomorrow. Putting these bottom drains in, building the basins back up and then going ahead uh, and actually doing a little bit of uh, backfilling on them. What we're then going to do is get the liners in. Uh, no, sorry, pre the liners going in. We're actually going to be backfilling this on this video today. Um, <clears throat> and then screeding it all off all the way around. So we're going to use the sharp sand mixed in with a little bit of cement. Uh, and then that'll go off again within 24 hours. And then Monday I can actually come down and actually fit, show you guys how I fit the bottom drains to the liners. Um, and then yeah it's a matter of getting this one here covered on the working weekend me and kane have got all of the timber uh to put in here for where the shipping container is actually going to sit and the regulation 23. fatty he's back smiling fatty he's back smiling and it was all thanks to darren and his lads that came over absolute credit and seriously if anybody's after any groundwork i would a hundred percent recommend these guys with my life he's looked at my plans he's looked at my drawings he's told me exactly where to start now where to move forward from and exactly what to be doing he even went through the costings for me to save 20 percent on the bottom line for what it's actually going to cost me to build this place by completing this getting it covered in the next 10 days completing this then moving backwards from the rest starting at the back and working our way out that's probably the way we should have done it in the first place but you all know me Go at things like a boy in a china shop. However, Kane's aimlessly walking around. He looks a little bit lost. So I'm gonna go over, get some more bits, and I'll sat back to you in a second when I'm firing him up in that dumper. Let's go. Now you're allowed to go up, Flower. What well, do you have to, you have to say the magic words? Let's go. Be beyond Scotty! <laughs> da -da -da. Da -da -da. Oh, me. If there is any health and safety executives watching, please look away now. What, what, what working height would you like to be at, sir? That's, that's brilliant. Is that a bit optimum, yeah? Optimum. Feel the wind in the air. Woo! Glad you can. You can't do. Let me put this in park so it doesn't decide to roll down the hill. Let me just show you. So, working at heights and all that, we're, uh, we're absolutely sound. I think the public liability, mate, kicks in in March. Okay. So if you fall for now. Are, are we adult friendly yet? Uh, yeah. Oh no, we're no longer adult friendly anymore, it's oh, fine. Okay. I'm all strapped on. Yeah, he's strapped on. That'll do. Right, what's the plan, Batman? That'll do. Let's go. But that is literally a perfectly built polytunnel inside of four hours tops now. We've got the top rail in. We've just discussed about what to do about the doors. Do we lift the rail like that to be able to get these door runners in? Obviously, we know we need to get some custom-built doors done. We've got a load of framing over there at the back that we could do that. But at least now, tomorrow, I can send a long tape up and over on both ends. We can measure the run across the front. We know it's 18 metres front to back, don't we? So we will be good to go and then we can start getting some quotes together and actually get this bad boy covered for the working weekend. Uh, obviously this week, plan of action to build the pad in here. But first off, take that down, get that built in at the back, then build the pads in and then we'll fit the other tanks that we're going to get in around that, aren't we? Uh, but we're going to concentrate on this now. We know these are all set up, up and running. Filters are doing great. Um, fish are doing great. So we're going to concentrate on this so we can get a load of our uber premium stuff that's coming over on some serious heat 
because obviously don't forget all these have got to be bottom drained in here we've got to get a manhole cover in at the front so we can put all of our drainage runs in and stuff like that so even though it looks covered now well it looks like we've made a massive dent we have but we need to get this covered pronto because what we don't want to be doing is digging in there sending dumpers in there when all the ground's wet because you might say oh are you gonna get the dumper in jack when it's covered very simple take this pin out take this pin out this then slides all the way back down to the floor and we can actually as you can see we can still send the dumper in so we can still be loading it full of muck taking it out and tipping it um you can see here at the back where we have really really turned it over uh, and this was just back and forward very very slowly seven or eight times so again this is where the railway sleeper pond is going to sit in the back here may even see if i can get a window for it to be fair There we go. So there's the regulation 23 shipping container in. Let me snap back to you in a second. Let's go. 240 volt plugs on the front. Shows you what hertz you're using, what volts, and what amps that you're using as well. It's got its own switchboard on the front. Obviously the only one that's turned on at the moment is L1, which is I've got 30 amps on here, 30 amps on this one, and 30 amps on this one as well. So you can see at the minute, this has been now been running for about eight hours. I've only used two bars of diesel uh, and in total this machine's got 3,493 and a half hours of runtime on there. Tops up with uh, red diesel in the top. This here is where the water cooler is and obviously this here is the exhaust fumes which yes on cold days like today does keep your hands very very warm. Now this generator here this is our 6,000 kVA generator. Again, a little diesel storage in the top. And what we were doing, we were basically built one of these barrel systems to hold 230 liters of red diesel. And it was on a trickling going into the top. The beauty about the big 20 kVA, and this thing weighs an absolute ton by the way, is the fact that it's got an inboard tank and an external tank. So the inboard tank is what's physically running through here, and the external tank is basically, I connect that blue drum, or a bunded diesel tank, onto here. So what we're actually gonna be doing, is just over the back over here, needs to stood up some uh, filter bubbles and stuff like that at the minute, which we'll show you the fish out in a sec. So over the back over here, so that's basically where my shipping tail is gonna go, which you guys have already seen that at this point, is we're gonna build a timber frame over here to actually sit both generators on here. So we'll have them boxed in, and then we'll actually block up the sides, which I've got 1,200 blocks coming in here because there's gonna be one, two, three, Four, there's gonna be four or five thousand gallon ponds in here so basically what we're we'll about to do then is once the extra uh, struts have come out two more two more and two more we're then going to run the picking and packing polytunnel here which in turn we can then take one 30 amp feed into here one 30 amp feed into there 
another 30 amp feed into the twin sales polytunnels that we're going to have over the back because here's the drawings and as you can see we're pretty much working off those drawings now that's exactly what we're doing where the office is going to be we will take a feed from the twin sales polytunnels from their 30 amps and actually feed in here all of the lighting systems in all of this is going to be low wattage led strip lights and we don't actually use all that much power now you might be asking jack where's the second kva generator going to go so that's going to go there the reason it's going to go there is this where i'm walking at the moment is going to be the heated polytunnel so you guys have already seen the spray painted lines that i put down previously but obviously the raids washed that away what we're going to be doing is each one of these is going to have a air source heat pump on the front on average each air source heat pump will be 14.4 kilowatts because the runtime on those should only situate me at around 800 watts per uh, pond so 8 16 24 32 uh 40 so 4000 watts alone in here will be just on air source heat pumps it's here the day we've all been waiting for the big working weekend uh i really need to shave my beard i look an absolute scruff but uh, got myself uh, a new beanie hat so we're just gonna wait in to get these printed up so yeah this is going to be the orange for the new beanie main plan of action for today is covering the polytunnel we're going to move all the sharp sands that we've got just there and move it on into the bottoms of the basins here uh, we're going to do a four to one mix so uh basically eight eight shovelfuls of uh, sharp sand to one bag of cement we're not going to put any water we're just going to mix that through dry because we want it like a screed uh, and then the natural moisture in the air will actually set that and make it go off we're also going to put the basin all the way around as well and re-get that lot back in but we've also got the big digger here let me spin you around so um we've got my mate up here on the big cat digger uh, what he's doing today is actually leveling off all of this ground here and all the spoil uh, and he's also taking all of this spoil here away uh, and re-pulling it all in nice and level so we've got a nice even ground to be working across on um big thanks to mick and mandy for sorting that out for me uh, when we put the basins in here it's going to sit basically on level with the top of this concrete here we've already pressure tested uh, the 4 inch drain so we put a 4 inch 90 on the side there and filled it full of water so it's all good to go big scraggy on the uh, wheelbarrow already uh, rocking and rolling so we've got scraggy we've got Ian Endress we've got John Dunn we've got Kane we've got Ollie Log and his mate coming over uh, but for the time being while the lads are getting ready what we're going to be doing oh we've got Paul Burt as well Paul Burt's coming over he's a fabricator welder uh, so he's going to be doing some stuff on the shipping container for me and also the polytunnel at the back we're going to tip all this in here because we roughly need about five or so ton uh, and then we've got to screed it all around uh, and get it all nice and level um, and then once it's level we're going to put a slight incline gradient on it all the way through but like I say it's uh, rocking and a rolling today we get in there need to still need to build this bottle drain in there as well these three though what a team they're making what a team and obviously we've got us rabbler lads over here but the hole uh, that's been full obviously it's still a little bit spongy until it settles properly but at least now that can have a nice solid winter settling over but yeah let me snap back to in a second when it's actually time start pulling this sheet let's go yeah Yeah. Yeah. Now we'll have to look at the steps in the middle. Yeah. And cover people on rails. Don't pop the old cap. Right? Perfecto. But you know what you're doing? We don't. This is winging a prayer for us, mate. At least you've covered a polytunnel before. Is that one? Right now. Who knotted that? Was that you, Kano? I knotted gave them, but there hasn't come undone. It's come out of. Oh, mate, I'm, I, I can grab that. Not still there. that all good. <laughs> right, we'll give it Ollie. We'll show that Ollie actually knows what he's doing. Kane, aren't you supposed to be like some like pro salesman? I did it. I did not say that. I mean, still there. I mean, <laughs> the still if you had some straws there, son, you would definitely be clutching at them. Just do this for me, Kane. 
Danny. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Got it! Looks a bit short. <laughs> Thank God for that, mate. I had a little, I had a little heart attack then. I thought that would have been six foot two short, Scrag. <laughs> Screws, I've got them here. Sitting on them. Told you. You're literally sitting on them. There you go. I'm just doing my thing for the team, mate, is what I'm doing. This is anarchy. Okay, so uh, the boys have been grading this off now through uh, the tape to spirit level onto a, a big piece of 4x2 there. Um, and you've got Ian now just going round, just fettling it all through, making sure it's all nice uh, on the outside so it is on a uh, slight gradient down. Um, so obviously all the stuff will uh, fall down and go into the bottom of the bottom drain. Um, but the guy's an absolute perfectionist so once this has all gone off tomorrow with the amount of uh, cement that's been mixed through it uh, it should be absolutely spot on and like I say I can go ahead then I can drop my liner in um, we pretty much sat halfway around all on the concrete ring what we'll do afterwards is obviously we'll just sort of go through and just literally tarten that up and make sure it looks nice and neat and then we'll probably put again another little concrete prism all the way around uh, Danny and Scraggy are just going through now and just giving Ian some more of the sand to be able to sort of go through. I think on the bottom one over here, um, we're just going to go uh, a little bit deeper uh, on this bottom drain in here, just so we don't have to do the mound of the concrete. Um, just so we can make sure it's nice and flush uh, with the floor, because we know that the floor sits two mil out. But obviously with the uh, four inch pipe work going through to here, if we can make sure then that Obviously, once we put the bottom drain in, which again, I'll, we'll, we'll do an in-depth detailed video and how we're actually gonna fit this one in. Um, we can then, like I say, go ahead and uh, just fill this here full of sand just to take it off on this gradient here, because it's gotta be all in level with this. Obviously, the back there is pretty much in line and level. So yeah, that is the plan on there, but that's the polytunnel, all nice and covered. Looking really, really good. Okay, so it is Sunday of the working weekend. We've got uh, John Thompson and his lovely wife up. We've even bought tea and coffee down for us. And bought me a Red Bull as well. Thank you very much for that. Uh, it's a lot warmer in here today than it is out there. Uh, we went to John Dunn's last night and we had a curry and a couple of beers. And me and Paul drove back up this morning and we we're on the lookout for the polytunnels. And it turns out you can see them crystal clear from the M6. Um, I'm feeling a bit nesh today, so I've got my, uh, my turtle neck on underneath. Slightly regretting wearing it though now because it's red hot in here. Um, but let me spin you around and show you exactly what we're doing today. So John's built himself a hook for his uh, for his jacket, aren't you, mate? Uh, so what we've done is uh, me, John, and his wife this morning have been working in putting in uh, the framing because uh, when we were here with Ollie yesterday, we were struggling um, to get all the creases and the folds out. The only thing that I'm dreading in a moment is I need to take this cut a hole in that so the plan is cut down here a little window out which in turn will give me enough to put a piece of 2b uh, 2b1 in here and roll it backwards and secure it onto this edge same as that I can then pull it round off the corner 2b1 in on this edge and then this one here we're actually going to cut a hole in there so we can roll it back from the top onto here and the same as on there and then where we're going to have three holes in here we've got more than enough spoil and off cut on the front um it is ludicrous the amount that we've got to be fair um we're then gonna we're then gonna build some boxes uh out of 2b1 to go uh on the inside and fill those holes in there so it's all nice and tall because what we don't want is for this to be a wind trap uh, at the back. Um, and then 
pulls over here find fucking us a frame up on the front aren't you son yes, mate. Yes, mate. Uh, so this is spider-man himself that literally jumped up on the uh the top of the frame at the back yesterday but what we've done for the time being because we've run out of m10 bolts uh we've just shaved this edge off up here so it's nice and smooth when we wrap it around but we will put some uh padding that's on the end of that roll there uh, on the corner we're going to put another noggin piece down here as well so the same principle basically as what we've done at the back of the tunnel uh we're going to be doing here uh big props to scraggy that came over yesterday channel link above for that video he bought us this uh upvc door for the front and by a happy accident um we've been left with these uh trunking holes on here so I need to reach out uh, to my main man at Lightwater Valley to see if he can actually print me uh, some Yashiki Gui uh, logos on here with the Balding Reefer and Reefer Oasis Koi Farm logo on the front. Uh, I'm going to get some blinds eventually. Um, I've seen them in uh, Ikea where the base of the blinds fit on the inside lip of here uh, and then you can pull them down. So when I'm working in here over night time, it'll all be nice and set. But Peloton from the outside is looking great. Let me take you out there and show you that. I mean, this here is the amount of access that we've got on the front. We've reused the 2B1 pieces up here on the top um, because this top piece here actually wraps and goes underneath and then there's a piece of 2B1 on the inside of the tunnel and on the outside just to give you that extra bit of strength. Uh, what we've done then is for the time being, I've just uh, tacked these in, because uh, what I need to do is obviously we've wrapped it and pulled it really taut, as you can see. Uh, but I'm just gonna put some penny washers on here uh, tomorrow in between each and every screw. And then I'm gonna take these ones back out and put some more penny washers on. Um, same as on this here, so we can pull that one nice and taut as well, just to stop the rain from sitting on the wood, even though it's all been treated. Obviously, it'll give us the extra length that we need. Obviously, it's nice and tight on here. Um, I was explaining just that, obviously, where you can see the line going down here, the tunnels do come with an option extra, which is basically an extra supporting brace that just lifts the inside of the tunnel. Basically, it runs all the way down there. Um, but inside, it's nice and taut. On the outside, because it's white, obviously, it looks like it's really loose. But I can assure you, it ain't. Um, we may we may get the supporting rods on there just depends on funds um but that's the back of the tunnel as you can see up there really really taut uh, and the same on the back obviously this here is just the overage that we've used but this here now obviously that enables the top to be really taut on there uh, with the folds that we've got in doesn't literally go anywhere uh, the same on these here obviously really really taut uh, all we need to do now is just literally get a jet wash jet wash all the back of the tunnel off so that stays nice and clean on there okay so front of the polytunnel doors all finished off nicely put your wide angle lens uh what we're going to do to add some added added put added added protection we can get some 2b1 over the top of here i'm going to get some uh penny washers screw whoop, straight through just to give it that extra little bit of strength all across there across the top and down here. What we've got to do now is build some noggins to go across these bits here. Then we can actually fit some uh, UPVC plastic uh, in here that we can actually get all these logoed up. But there is no more going through the side entrance. Go on, Lee, mate, do, do the honours. And then show him how well the door closes, son. And just literally a nice gentle pull. Oh, yes. Coming in. How you doing? You okay? You need to buy some koi? Yeah. Okay, I guess we've got none anyway. I have a cuppa, you have a cuppa? All right, we'll have a cuppa then. Okay, so uh, me and Lee have just put the liner in. Obviously, I've got my shoes off so I don't go through it or anything like that, but it's holding up really, really nice and taut now. Obviously, we've got pretty much all the creases out the bottom. The actual hole, as you can see, sits right around in here now on this disc here there's actually little pinholes where we actually put bear with me let me grab them he says these screws here inside of the uh, the actual pinhole but what i actually need to do first off which is quite daunting is actually cut a hole in my liner here 
Then we've got a ring that's on top of the generator that Lee's gonna grab me now. And we've got two tubes of CT1. So what we've got to do is literally cut the hole in here so we can actually get underneath, lay a bead of CT1 all the way around. Um, and then we're gonna lay a bead of CT1 on the top. But first we're actually gonna poke holes in here. So let me get that, let me cut this here and poke the holes in. And then I can actually lift it up and show you exactly how we fit the line to a bottom drain. Let's go. Okay, now all I've done then is put my <clears throat> circle top for my bottom drain on and then literally just cut a hole in the middle. If I lift this up now, you should be able to see just there, they've actually got grit and sanding, um, where this ring here actually needs to screw down onto. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go through and drive fit these screws inside the hole, uh, just to get that grit out. And then I can actually put this on and we'll just get a sharp, we'll just get a sharp um, instrument and we'll basically just find the holes and we will just literally nibble in exactly where the hole is so we can match it up onto that rim there. Okay, so I put a mountain of CT1 down. What I'm gonna do now, if you let go, Luke, let go. We're just gonna gently bring this out back down because we want it to sit nice and even. What we're gonna do then is I've already punctured one hole in here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this on the top. But first, I'm gonna put a squiggle of CT1 on that. Then I'm gonna press it down into place and I'm gonna show you ratcheting it into place. Let's go. Well, she ain't pretty, but she works. Full Gunker CT1 on the inside. Each one of the screw heads has had a big Gunker CT1, and obviously I'll put a big ring around the outside. Obviously, you're not going to see any of these wires. Would I have liked to have used black CT1? Yes. Could I get any? No. Was I going to use white? Yeah. So, it is what it is. But, that's that job done. I think I've got more CT1 on me than I have the bottom drain. But you know what? If she holds, she holds. That's all I really care about right now, right about now. But it's freezing. I've got no socks on. Oh, well, I've got socks on, but I've got no shoes on. So it's time for me to get in the car. I'll snap back to you all tomorrow when I'll show you like, the polytunnel that we've pegged out. Let's go. Okay, so lovely and frosty outside. Lovely and warm in here. I reckon it's got to be 10, 12 degrees in here. Easy, easy. Okay, so the pegging out that me and Daryl did yesterday. So when you first come in, 3,000 gallon pond here, 3,000 gallon pond here, split with a wall off here, both filtration units are gonna sit there. This pond here, this one here is gonna be 3,000 gallon, split wall, 3,000 gallon. <coughs> this bottom drain is gonna lead up to a filter, it's there. This one is gonna to lead to a filter, it's there. This one at the back is roughly gonna sit around six and a half thousand gallons, two bottom drains going into a big, big filter bed down here at the back. Um, what we've got to do now is basically, we're going to, we're going to dig down around 800 mil. So we're going to have a four inch uh, sub base floor in there, four to five inch sub base floor. And I'm going to come out the ground uh, around 1.4 meters which is going to situate the top of the pond around here. So you'll be stood there like so looking in. But what we're going to do is because we've got to grade off the floor and that, we're going to slightly increase the height of the floor. We're going to run all these railway sleepers all the way down and around the front edge, which in turn is going to allow us to backfill that and then build up. So we'll, we'll gain an extra, uh, what, a six, 700 mil? Uh, by the time we've built all the floor up. Um, so in essence, you'll be looking over 1.2, not 1.4, that it actually comes out of the ground. Uh, I've got Darren and the lads coming down Friday, which is tomorrow. Um, so they're literally you're going to start at the back, dig that one out, dig this one out, and dig the bottom one out. We're then going to order uh, all of the concrete. I think it's going to be about nine cubes of concrete that we need to order to get that put down. Uh, all the wire meshing in, four inch pressurized piping, etc. etc. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be a dream to get that in tomorrow. But, like I said earlier, we have officially named it the Koi Academy because not all Koi are made equal and not all Koi are actually going to make it. But let me just, you know, shut my soft closing new PVC doors. One finger. Oh, he says. No, my lock's frozen. There you go. Now it's shut. The lock was frozen.
Okay, so Saturday morning, 11 a.m. Just thought I'd uh, snap back after that lovely Japanese meal yesterday uh, and show you what the lads have done because, by God, it is massive. And let me spin you around and show you exactly what they've done. Obviously, you've just seen the B-roll footage. Wow. That is going to be some pond. That is absolutely huge. And I mean huge. They've even... Uh, Put me a little bit of a, a TBR on the uh, middle walkway. Uh, so this here is actually going to be the walkway. Uh, and I'm sorry, our filtration box is going to sit in there. Roughly where the pegs are is where the uh, 7,000 gallon pond is going to sit. It actually looks really small now in, inside of this extra massive hole that we've got here. Um, but it is a hell of a filter size. And I mean a hell of a filter size. Um, we may yet go a little bit bigger. I don't know. Need to speak to Daryl. See what his plans are on that one. Uh, they've left me a ramp in here, down the back, uh, in order so we can actually get the digger and dumper in and out. So literally come straight down and just start pouring this in. We need to take uh, the back off um, to actually enable us to literally backfill all this here uh, with concrete. Uh, we do need to pull this sheet down as well, uh, just to give it that extra little bit of tautness. We'll give it one more one more roll um like i say once the door's off and stuff like that obviously when the wind catches in it it does tend to pick it up and move it a little bit um not the tunnel just the actual sheet in itself but there is one more three and a half thousand gallon well sorry there's two more three and a half thousand gallon ponds literally going right up to where that red edge marking thing is just there i've got the boys coming back over on wednesday uh to pour the concrete for me so we literally going to have four cubes of concrete in here and four cubes of concrete in here and four cubes of concrete in the end one. Um, this is going to be one of the best growing houses in the country. Full stop. You heard it here first. Um, and I cannot wait to show you some of the project fish. Okay, so uh, another day at the cover farm. Still wrapped up warm sun is bleating through these covers it is red hot in here to the point i'm actually debating taking me uh my over shirt off um plan of action today is get the bottom drains in um lee's just nicked off to get some more diesel for me um and then you will be taking that middle basin down there and moving it on over this bit here we've got danny from my boys crew liverpool coming down as well so we will be featuring on this video channel link above for that um for those of you that don't know much about danny's channel uh he's a new up-and-coming koi keeper uh, he's got his own koi farm very similar to me um he's got i think in a region of about 20 to 25 uh, to 30,000 koi in his lake uh, it's going to be harvesting over in March uh, so make sure you do click the link that's popped up um, to actually subscribe to his channel I'm literally going to send that up now um, he's just hit over the 400, 400 subscriber mark let's see if we can get him to the 500 pound mark do me a humongous favour head over to his channel comment in the comment section saying TBR sent you what I will do as a thank you for helping grow his channel, I will send you one of these uh, Loomis orange hats with a TBR badge in the middle. Uh, I will send you a TBR mug and I'll make sure Danny sends you one of these mugs as well. The only way uh, to enter is literally head over to his channel, um, comment in there saying TBR sent me on any single one of his videos. What we'll do between Christmas and New Year, we will go ahead and we will pick a random com comment generator to pick one of them off Danny's video. <laughs> Uh, let me spin you around though and talk you through exactly how I'm going to be setting these bottom drains in. Okay, so the pond basically sits five metres in length uh, by five metres uh, in width. So what I need to do is find the exact middle and then come a metre and a half either side because I want my bottom drains to have uh, a two metre gap in the middle. So I'm going to find the middle uh i'm gonna come uh no sorry not to not a meter and a half i'm gonna find the middle i'm gonna come a meter this side and a meter that side and that's basically where i'm actually gonna go ahead and sit my bottom drains this one is a little bit more complex so this is going to be uh, a seven thousand gallon pond but split into two so we two three and a half thousand gallon ponds pretty much where that stake is there is roughly the middle of the pond 
the breeze blocks are going to be going flat so face down so that's 225 mil so what i'm going to do is i'm going to knock off 112.5 mil either side of the stick uh, and i've got some line paint that i'm actually going to line mark out the area so i can talk you guys through exactly how i'm going to be finding the middle um i need to chisel out a bit of a section here because that's where my uh, tbr filter bay box is going to go here's a picture of that so we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail uh on a upcoming video between christmas and new year so this bottom drain pipe is going to sit and run down there and this bottom drain pipe uh is going to sit there and run up here because again this here is where my next filter bay is going to go uh once we've actually blocked up the sides i will then go ahead uh, and backfill that spoiling just there uh there is going to be another two three and a half thousand gallon uh koi ponds going up the front um but obviously we need an area where we can work where we can put all the blocks down and stuff like that so hopefully these should be getting poured on Thursday. I'm just waiting for confirmation from the concrete company today. Um, so if that is the case, we'll take off the UPVC doors so we can bring the dumper in and out. Take the double doors out, then we continuously just keep bringing in the dumper and keep spilling it in, spilling it in and spilling it in. Uh, what we'll go ahead and do then is we'll then remark on the concrete pad exactly where the walls are going to go. And then again, we'll backfill this area in here. Uh, you can see there where that red line is to so that red line that's basically going to be the walkway between the middle we may or may not actually be having some cool windows in here um i need to speak to a guy that i know is getting rid of a load uh, they are second hand um i don't really want to fork out the expense obviously we do have a trade account now with the windows and stuff um but i don't really want to be forking out extra expense uh to put windows in here we may put a big window in the front i don't know just depends on what size i can actually get hold of uh, and on the weekends because it's give less wind we're actually going to go ahead uh, and re-pull this back down um just in lee's little course of pull up so let me go ahead and turn the generator on and then i'll snap back to all in a second once we actually start lining this out let's go if we pan you around this way That's, uh, that's a real good mess. Six hundred quid down the Swanee on the polytunnel. I'll refix that back there. I'm gonna cut that bar off. What I'm gonna have to do now, move all these bags of cement inside the shipping container so they don't get ruined and uh, concrete these outdoors before I get the rest up because I can't put the tubes in until I've got everything else in luckily enough I've got some spare archways it's just going to be a nightmare now because we need to take out all that top rung and put it at the bottom fuming is an understatement but you know what we're gonna go again. I'm telling you now, nothing is stopping me building this coy farm, and nothing will stop me being open March 18th. Let's go. Stay safe, stay sane. Most importantly, people stay happy. Balding Reaper out. Okay, another video, another day this time another year happy new year to everybody that is watching um go make 2023 yours go claim it go own it um if you dream big enough and you're ballsy enough you can pretty much do what you want um 2022 was a fantastic year we had some humongous highs we've had some humongous lows that was the last low of 2022 for me um but already 2023 is off to a positive start i'm taking one day at a time if i could make each day a good day by the time i get to the end of 2023 i'm gonna have the best year that i've ever had so that is the plan make each day a good day let me spin you around though show you exactly what we've been doing so what we did is when we had these dug out you'll notice that none of these have come out that one hasn't come out this one's loose that one's come out that one's come out that one's come out the reason for it is obviously we've had to go quite close to the edge 
I'm pretty confident if the cement company didn't let us down on the 22nd of December, this actually wouldn't have happened. But it is what it is. We roll with the punches. It's all about staying positive in 2023, you know what I mean? Um, so, concrete's coming, 4th of Jan, three days time. Got to get these bottom drains set and get them in. Then I'm going to concrete the base in here. Then I ain't covering it. I ain't covering it until I've got everything built, blocked up and done. Let me spin you around. This bad boy here is also being done on the 4th of Jan. And so is this one here. These two are now set in. Need to still finish off that, obviously, just haven't had time over Christmas. This one here, uh, again, needs to come out and get that switched over. But we're looking good. We're getting there, slowly but surely. Okay, so the date today is Saturday, 4th of February. Uh, you'll notice that I'm using my phone because I've got a new camera, uh, which is pretty cool. A uh, hell of a lot has changed over the past couple of weeks. A uh, hell of a lot indeed. Um, today's job, getting the back of the polytunnels in. Um, I'll be messing around with camera settings because there's a lot loads of different focus settings on here and stuff like that. See how the background's now clear. And the background's now blurry. Honestly, I'm having so much fun with this. Uh, just want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to everybody that joined the live stream last Friday. That's given me a hell of a lot of support, a hell of a lot of shout outs and stuff like that. I do really appreciate it. Um, I can't wait to get this open and meet you guys and, and shake your hands individually. I mean, today alone, over about 15 or 16 different people have turned up just to see if I'm all right after the live stream because it's, it's hard, man. It, it is tough building this place, but I love it. There's a, a lot of change that's gone on uh, and happened over the past couple of weeks. Let me spin you around and show you that. Let's go. Okay, so as I explained uh, a little bit yesterday, obviously I've got my new camera, so I'm just playing around with uh, the new settings on here. But... What we've done is we've used this 9B3. So we found all these 9B3s. Uh, Danny at My Boys Crew Channel sent the link over for me. Um, and we're actually building in uh, these basins here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a bottom drain in the middle and then the filtration unit's gonna sit this side. On this one here, we're gonna put a bottom drain in here and the filtration's gonna sit the other side. Because if I take you just round here, We've got plenty of room to actually have the filtration unit sat in here and not have to worry about not being able to net the fish here and stuff like that. We're still gonna be able to get in this way and we're still gonna be able to get in round the back as well. Uh, as you can see though, it's a beautiful, beautiful day. So we are in the process now of, like I say, you can literally see the water going a nice pea green. We are in the process of uh, switching round this filtration here so we're going to turn the pump round pump through uh, a uv bulb which is a 75 watt going into the tbr box filter and then we're actually going to go ahead and gravity re gravity return into this pond here uh we've got Hi. big man up today we're uh, doing a bit of block work today aren't we yeah so when they're doing some of the cementing which i've Finish those four walls. I'm, yeah. I, uh, I'm chiselling uh, all the little bits off. Yeah. So. so then we can render the outside, yeah. can't we? So you, you take Daddy's water over there, then Daddy'll finish this bit off, then we'll come over and I'll show you. You start chiseling away, John's from yesterday. You start chiseling away, and I'll come over and show you in a sec, yeah? Okay. So we've got the. Uh, We've got the mortar mix is going, we've got the string line down at the bottom. What we're doing at the moment is I'm just building up uh, the corners over here. I have explained before that I can block. I'm very neat, but I'm very slow. But if this takes me a week to complete, it takes me a week to complete and we've saved another sort of five, fifty, six hundred pounds on a build. The other bricky that we had in, don't get me wrong, it was very fast, but very messy. So we've got Brooklyn and Aisha over here, over the back. Oh, nearly fell. Let me spin you around. So we've got Brooklyn and Aisha over the back. So could we want to actually K-render at the front of this? Do you want to explain what you're doing, Brooklyn? So we are getting like, you see, like these on the wall. And there's big ones like these, what we're trying to get the chisel and the hammer bang them together then uh, 
uh, it'll break these off, but without the chisel and the hammer, just our fingers, it just won't budge. Yeah, so it's basically, it's all these big bits here that are, yeah. that are hanging out the sides, isn't it, that we want to actually... Uh, in here as well. Bro. Go ahead and take off. <laughs> so let me show you around uh, here. So this is what I mean. So these here are the bits that the guys are actually trying to uh, knock off with the uh, chisel and whatnot. Um, but the new fence, the new concrete holes that we're putting uh, with the new concrete bags are a hell of a lot stronger than the last ones that we put in as well. So uh, that's working an absolute treat. But we've just laid some more muck down. Uh, so let me snap back to you in a second once we're actually laying some more bricks. Let's go. Okay, Monday the 6th of February for West Koi Farm. Uh, block work and pond building today. Uh, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling healthy, I'm feeling strong. Um, losing, losing some weight as well, which is good, just watching what I eat and stuff. Uh, the only reason I mention that is because I know my face looks pretty pasty at the moment, but as you can see, it's dust. I've uh, been doing some more block work today. Let me spin you around and show you that. Let's go. Okay, so you will notice where we had the window in. Obviously, from there to there. Now, a lot of people will be like, Jack, you've lost your bond, mate. You can't do that right there to there. <laughs> well, you can, because what I've done is I've uh, drilled through uh, here, 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 and here, 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 and here. Uh, and when I've lost the bond, where was it now? Where did I lose the bond? Anyway, somewhere around here, uh, there's wall ties in there as well, uh, just to make sure it's held across. Oh, here, here where I lost the bond. There's wall ties all across that line there as well. Um, this isn't the finished height. We've still got to build the floor up yet, and there's still another uh, two courses of mix to go in here, but it's currently about 10 past four. So I'm just going to clean down for the day uh, on the cement mixer. Um, and then we're going to have to go ahead and uh, screwed the floor in the next couple of days. So that's gonna be interesting. Like I say, there's another four bricks to go on here. So we're gonna finish two more bricks higher than that. Um, like I say, you won't be able to view anything from the back here. It'll be the sides uh, all the way around there. But <clears throat> again, I just need to jump in and finish pointing up the back of that. Uh, then we can call that a day on there. Uh, and then over the back, we've got Big J and Ash, but they've got the radio blaring at the minute. So I can't go over there because of uh, YouTube won't like it for copyright reasons, but again, another beautiful day. Uh, Et another uh, pallet of blocks on here today. Um, getting them in there. Uh, like I say, another, yeah, I reckon another pallet, pallet and a half tomorrow to get that finished off. Uh, and then obviously onto here. The other day when I was playing around with my new camera, uh, still playing with it, it's just I've not got it today, I'm using my phone at the minute. But, Real nice tight bonds, look at that. Big J's on camera! Hey! So we've got the troops up. I'm gonna have to dolphin that noise out now. We've got a uh, got big ash. He's up here. Um <coughs> so what are we doing chaps? Smashing it. Smashing it up. We're gonna have to dolphin that as well. Smashing it. Good man, good man. So what size are these? 10B7? You have to dolphin that noise out as well. This is going to be a fun edit. Uh, so, what size are these behind? Uh, 10b8s. So these are 10b8s. I'm not going to show the other pond. 10b8, 10b8, 7b10, 7b10, 7b10 be down there. Make that sleep pond level, and we'll probably build some of our 12 and 10. So on the top of here, we're taking this one, we're taking this bit off, aren't we? Take that bit off and rebuild it so we've got a shade of point all the same all the pool. So basically this is the one ton that's gonna be bang on, yeah? Yeah. So when you walk in everything's gonna be the same height and level. Yeah, unlike your tunnels, Jack. Yeah, unlike my tunnels, that is exactly right. So we're gonna pick this up by hand uh, and move it over. Uh, so it's literally just off uh, here, so we can actually square it up uh, to the tunnel because this is square, but the tunnel isn't. So we're actually going to make this fit in line. I'm going to string line all the way down there at this point, all the way through. Um, and then we're going to go ahead, fiberglass this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, 
this one, the other one at the end, and then the big uh, um, 20 foot by 10 foot at the bottom as well. Uh, so these are all of the uh, Normby Freeze that we got from that old granary mill that I was explaining on the last video. Uh, so the lads have literally spent all morning cutting these down, uh, but the boys are going to be staying with me tonight. So we can um, get cracking. Uh, we're just fitting the UV bulbs up over the back uh, and we're just letting the uh, pond go off there now before we put the, uh, the other bits of uh, block on tomorrow. Well, let me stand back to you in a second once I've actually got this one up and running. Let's go. We are going to be going ahead and putting steel tubes in all the way down the top. And obviously there's going to be no door there, no door there, front door on there. And obviously there's going to be no back door on the back with it being a quarantine house. But I am absolutely loving life. Things are very slowly but surely uh, coming together now, uh, which is incredible. Uh, I just want to thank everybody again for all the love and support and stuff like that that we've been getting uh, as of late. The finish line is in sight. I can almost feel it now. Um, would not be able to get where I am today without the help of all of you guys. Uh, and it's incredible. Uh, David Cooley bloke come over the other day to pick up an easy pod because I am selling the easy pods for 250. I've got three left, um, so I am moving those on. So if anybody's after an easy pod, hit me up in the video description down below, and you're more than welcome to come up and collect one. But it's getting there. Hell of a lot of fish come over for uh, sort of second to third week of March. A lot of fish, a lot of fish, but it's going to be incredible. Um, so you've got to raise the floor up in here eventually, uh, but for the time being, we should get these covered, get some wood chip in here so it soaks up uh, any of the water that comes off before we manage to get the French drains in and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the next one because with the span of these three tunnels, when the rain comes down, believe you me, it's going to come down. So we need to get them sorted al pronto. I'm looking forward to getting these covered. Obviously seeing this polytunnel inside here covered is gonna be a fair old change. But it means we can work in the dry. Um, we're not starting the sales tunnel yet. We're gonna wait till sort of uh, April, May time, maybe even June or July before we get that up and running. Uh, because again, we need to pull the ground off there. We're in discussions at the moment. We've potentially building a huge holding pond outside for all the water runoff and stuff like that to be able to go into. It's going to be coming off here because our big Jay was saying we're in 10, 15 minutes of a good downpour. He reckons we'll, we'll be filling a thousand litres in an RBC tote that we're going to put on the front doors within sort of 10 to 15 minutes. So a lot of work left to do, a lot of work left to do, but at least, like I say, we can, we can see sort of coming. Obviously when we open, it's, it's not going to be a finished article by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but at least they'll be hard standing in here. Uh, at least you can see what we're doing. You can see the fish, you can see the ponds. It's going to be incredible, it really is. And I have to pinch myself and have a look and go back through videos of old to realise how far that we've come in such a short space of time. I mean, we've been building this since August. September, October, November, December, January, February. Six months we've been building this now. It's not easy, but it sure is fun. Not easy, but it sure is fun. But once we start getting some of these fiberglass and stuff and we can move the fish into them and stuff, it's going to be absolutely incredible. I mean, already it's, the wind's not too strong today or anything like that. So you can almost imagine what it's going to be like once it's covered. Sound of running water going, fish clapping on the surface for some food. It's going to be incredible, it really is. So we've had a gentleman's wager, the big J. How big is he? He reckons he could do two all the way over the back. Don't hold him, don't hold him. Not one stop, big J. Not one stop, son. Not one stop, J. 500 quid, I'm up here in a bit, boys, if you can't lift this. <laughs> I'm having for five years, son. Don't do it. Leave it alone. 
Hey, I'm thinking of bad notes here, son. The guy's like an ox, man, isn't he? <laughs> Big J is drunk. No, that's dragging it. That does not count. No, 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 no. This is a 500 pound wager, son. You cannot drag it. This kills me and Ash doing this on our own together. No dragging, no dropping. The moment you get past the green, which is here. Got it. Whoa. Leave it alone, man. Just fucking leave it alone. He's a beast. Go on, son. You'll have Daisy watching it going, go on, Dad. See, he hasn't factored in the ground. <laughs> he's, he's screwed in here, ladies and gentlemen. Jay, we, I tell you what, mate, considering how much you've helped me out, we can void the bill if you want. Put it down, Jay, it's too heavy, mate. Put it down, son. You don't want this, mate, look. Oh, come on, me and Ash will do it. We'll void the gentleman's bet. To be fair, mate, some try that was, I couldn't even get it off the van. <laughs> so I said to Scraggy, do you want me to do this, mate, with the ice? He says, no, it's all right, I've got my steps. So... Just chopping that off now. We've got the we've got the 10 mil Simco bits. We poured this. Right for this go off. That's only been in 15, 20 minutes, but it's the quick set concrete stuff. So that's bang on. All the rest of the legs in. We've got a load of 4v2. We're gonna put that on, we're gonna be getting it covered. We've got big Shawnee Kimba. He's back on his feet. We've got Levy down as well. And let me show you something special. Boys are on it. You know, you know. Like a well old machine, these pair are. Right? Big J's on the phone as normal. And look at this. Pond number one, fiber glass. So the beauty is, if you look at the back side, that's a nice shade of pink. If you look at this side, it's gone clear. Uh, that's the resin that Butcher was putting in earlier on that he was explaining about, which we'll go through it again uh, a little bit later on. But this, gone off already. Yes. So we've left the bottoms out just so uh, the styro can come out and go underneath because the styro uh, gases are heavier than air. So they flush out on the bottom so it cures an awful lot faster and an awful lot quicker. Uh, but the boys are monstering with that. I've got to go pick the twins up. Then when we get back after dinner, we're going to be covering the uh, polyton up the back and I'm going to take you down here a little bit later on. I might do that in a separate video, I don't know, because we've got something huge coming. Let's go. Operation Polytunnel has begun. Ian Endres, Scraggy. Got Big Ash over. Whack it in, son. We've got Big J. Got the fiberglass, man. John Thompson's back over. Well, uh, Sean and Lee's over as well. So we're going to put this on the back now. We've got everything locked in. We've got the back support braces in. So we're ready to rock and a roll. Let's go. Well, big Jay got everybody in. Ash is up on top. You know. It's coming. You watch the bottom now because the bottom will kick out because it's all layered like that. You just grip that until these keep pulling it over. Go, on, Big J.
big fucking weekend in BMI. Big weekend on the BMI. Big weekend on the BMI. Watch <laughs> <laughs> you stay down for a big weekend on the BMI. What you got? Boch loves it. Boch loves it. <laughs> Scrag is still in the corner doing his thing. Give the thumbs up, Scrag. Give the thumbs up. Tell you what, so much easier when there's no wind. Last time, mate, it took off like a, like a hot air balloon. It took six of us, pull it down. Oh, that was Dante, Dante. Hey, over yet? Not till we bolt this down. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right, snap back to the sec, let's go. Okay, so you'll notice that we're doing something a little bit different. So, Scraggy uh, and John have been trimming these end pieces down here. What we're gonna do is use this as one big giant roll bar so we can get it all nice and flush on both sides. So we're just gonna go ahead now and give these a bit of a whack uh, to actually go ahead uh, and get these to go in. And we're gonna put it underneath, roll it, pull it down the other side, really, really toss it down, uh, and then we're good to go. Let's go. Okay, so we just left a protection sheet of cardboard around here, just while we go ahead and cut it. Just so we don't actually set fire to the uh, pot. Watch your fingers, John. Go on, go on, go on, you can cut now. Tuesday, 14th of February, Valentine's Day, Rifa Oasis Kuifa. Uh, very, very, very productive weekend. Polly Tunnel's on, she's got the bacon, so she's probably just going in there at the minute this morning. Um, this fiberglass has gone off. Today's video is all about where are the bottoms of my ponds? There's been a hell of a lot of questions coming through. Uh, people saying, oh, it looks wicked, it looks great, but why is there no bottoms raining? Why is there no base to your pond in and stuff like that? So I thought I'd, I'd do a video to basically explain where the base of my ponds are, why aren't they in, etc., 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 and why we've done it the way that we are. Uh, I'm also in today's video going to show you the reefer away school farm fills out because, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it does indeed work. Um, as I explained in the last video, this one is a pump fed one. Uh, but I've used it in a slightly different way, so I'm going to go ahead and show you that in a second as well. Uh, we'll have a quick look at some fishes, uh, and then we'll guide you through some big plans that are coming uh, over the next couple of days. Because at 12 o'clock today, I've got a 15 ton digger being dropped off. Let's go. Okay, so you'll notice in here, there's a little bit of rubbish that needs to be moved, uh, but there's no flooring. You'll notice on this fiberglass one, there's also no flooring this one again no floor this one no floor you're probably getting the message now none of them have got floors in nobody's actually guessed why we've not got the floors in either now the main reason why we've not actually got the floors in yet so every pond on the farm it's going to be run off a four inch bottom drain so we can make sure we get the most amount of flow through as humanly possible now obviously we built seven ponds here in one day come saturday and sunday the rest of these are going to be fiberglass we ran out of catalyst on the last video which in turn meant that we couldn't actually go ahead and build them now 
these ponds here, the reason why they've got no subbasin is because we're doing that after we fiberglass the outside. So we're going to fiberglass the walls, then we're going to put the bottom drains in, and then we're going to build a screened floor going into the top. And the reason for that is because when you're fiberglassing, you have what's called styro. So styro uh, is basically what's in the, the actual fiberglass sheeting. When you're mixing your resin with your cat and you're putting it on the wall, the styro is heavier than air. So basically what happens is the styro fumes come all the way down to the bottom and they sit on the floor. The easiest way to explain it is this top piece here will all be going off. We get about three quarters of the way down and the bottom will be going off, but at a much slower rate. We're fiberglassing these in mass scale. So it's far easier for us to go ahead and fiberglass all the sides, put the floor in, screed the floor, and then fiberglass the floor. Because what we'll do is we'll leave the four inch bottom drain open and we'll leave the pipe open as well. So when Butch is back and he's fiberglassing the floor, because the floors are gonna be chamfered down, that styro is very slowly gonna come down to the middle, into the four inch drain, straight out the side, and then it'll just be literally leaking out into the open air, which in turn means that by the time we've done these of a morning and then gone all the way to the back early afternoon, we could be sanding them down. Then we can go ahead and top coat them in one sitting. It's just far easier, far quicker and far simpler uh, to do it that way for speed. Now, if this was, I don't know, spring, we're at a constant 12 degrees or above, not really dropping below 10 at night time or anything like that, then of course we could just literally build them all as normal and go right ahead and, and fiberglass them. Or if we were hovering around that sort of 10 degree level, which you don't really want to fiberglass underneath 10 degrees, uh, we'd, we'd go ahead, we'd build them all in and then we'd fiberglass them all in one sitting. If we were covered, we'd wait uh, like a full two day for the full cure time to go in because yes they'll be hard but they will be a little bit tacky still for the first sort of 24 uh, to 36 hours so that's why we've actually got no floors at the moment but those floors will be in because we've got butch here on uh, saturday uh, and sunday plans for this week big plans bricklayer is coming wednesday and thursday Queer Academy will be complete and finished and uh, ready for fiber and gassing on the weekend, uh, which I'll take you in there in a second and show and go through uh, the pond sizes that we're going to have uh, in there. We've got all, we've got 35,000 toe side that coming us very, very soon. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, Jos Aben is over from Holland Friday, Saturday and Sunday. He's with me at the Kui Farm. Uh, we are going to be doing an evening with Jos Aben on Friday night. There will be no Friday night live this week, but instead we're going to go for dinner. So if anybody would like to attend with us, we're going to the Mile House uh, Steakhouse restaurant, average meal, couple of drinks, about 35, 40 pounds. Uh, if you want to come, let me know. Obviously it is limited space. We don't want to take over the whole restaurant and we want to make it like a really small, close knit event. So if anybody is interested in the night with Jos Aben, uh, then let me know. Um, there's a, about three or four places we take at the moment, so there's five or six seats left. Let me know if you'd like to attend, literally just a night of complete and utter fish nerdy, to be honest with you. Um, but let me spin you around and let me show you the reef oasis Koi Farm filter. Let's go. Okay, so with the four or five days worth of uh, sun that we've been having up here, obviously this has gone really, really green. Ooh. Um, what we have done is we are coming off a four inch round this side here. Obviously we've got our T there that we've got a pipe in. Coming up through the easy in the middle of the 320, through the bubble ring on the outside, down through the pump, through the um, Superfish 75 watt UV, which is absolutely incredible. My mate Ash has brought me a cup of tea over. Cheers, brother. Um, so we're coming through the 75 watt. And then what we're doing from there is we're going up and into the Reefer Oasis Koi Farm filter. You may be asking, Jack, oof, lovely cup of tea. You may be asking, Jack, why have got these pipes on here? Very simple, ladies and gentlemen, spoons. Very simple indeed. I merely ran out of uh, two inch T pieces, so I can't actually build these bottom sluices off uh, until my uh, two inch T piece comes in there, uh, and then we can actually go ahead and take these off. But I wanted to get these up and running uh, to actually go ahead and show you guys exactly how we're doing it. But I've uh, just turned this off for now, so I can actually go ahead and 
show you on the inside how it, how it all works. Now, yes, I haven't put my jack matting in. I need to go over and see uh, Chris Marsh at Queenie Coy. Um, but when this is turned on, basically this inside chamber here actually fills up, comes across, comes down, comes up, and then comes straight back through there. But you can see there, we look in a nice sort of pea soup where we've had the water going for the last sort of, uh, sort of four or five days in the sun. Um, the back one there is uh, rocking and a rolling. But yeah, let me go ahead and turn the pumps back on because the lads are just moving the bobcat around there, which I'll show you that in a second, which is what we're doing there. So let me turn that back on and I'll show you exactly how this works. Well, okay, so there you go. You can see it now that we've uh, turned the um, electrics back on. So it comes across, down here, underneath, and then back up, and then out for the four inch outlet at the top there. Uh, we've got the UV and everything running, but it works, ladies and gentlemen, an absolute treat. Jay, what do you do the stoves, mate? Come on, don't be shy now, son. What are we do with the stones? I need to know, come on. Hey, we do need. <laughs> he's getting all shy because he's on camera. Let's get him on full focus zoom. <laughs> so what we do <coughs> So what we do with the stones is basically we've got to keep filling this in here. We're gonna take a level off uh, this point here, like a date and point of your log, uh, coming all the way across uh, to the back. But at the minute big lad was stuck in the hole but we're going to spread this round and then we're going to uh, retrench out for where the drains are going to go and then get the screen going <laughs> let's go okay so this is the following day where we've uh, gone out and whacked all this down now we've moved the bassoon from over the back onto here we've got the bottom drain in obviously we've got mesh uh, within the actual concrete itself and then we've got a mesh ring on top that we're actually going to go ahead and sit this on to stop the uh, the metal going through the ground or moving the ground or anything like that. If the ground does move, we've got that extra layer of protection. Let me show you in the back over here. Because tomorrow, we'll pull this liner out, shaving this one, do exactly the same that we did on these two here. And this side of the tunnel is done. We've got the connecting bars in all around the top. Yes, we do need to move these over, etc., etc. pin them in, but we can't do that until this is moved. That, you have to wait for the next video to see what we're doing there. Remember, bought me. Sound well clear of the bag coming open. No, 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 it's still full. There she blows. She's Big Jay. We've got the boys in today. Bricky's back. Absolutely rocking and rolling through here. Obviously, that's where our window's going to go, and that's the finished height there. The same as the uh, the other one at the back. Obviously, we've got to build the floors up and stuff like that yet. Yeah. Because uh, no one's going to be able to stand here and look at fish. But by the time we've added on an extra sort of uh, four or five inches on the floor, everything will be hunky dory. Bought two seven and a half thousand gallon koi ponds. Literally just got to take this course all the way through to the back, and then these have got to be uh, plied with 18 mil, and then we've got butcher cement, the uh, butcher, the uh, fiberglass are coming over. But that there will literally be the view straight when you walk through them doors. This weekend, we also got all the troops over, jacking these legs up get it in that extra little sort of seven eight percent that we need to make it back skin tight again but obviously the polytunnel's gonna move we expected that that's why we've been leaving the doors open just so it can wiggle, it, wiggle itself free like that now is a little bit loose but by the time we've actually gone ahead and jacked the bars up we're absolutely bang on so we've got the welding spider-man back and he's even gone and welding me together my very own little pry bar it turns out it works an absolute dream doesn't it john boy yep. Ladies and gentlemen, she's like a drum. Check this out. Bear in mind, we've only jacked this left side and we haven't jacked the right side yet. Bosh. 
Okay, so we've got uh, one tank all uh, fiberglass in. Obviously, we've raised it up again so we can let that styro leach out. Uh, same as on this one. We've got a big bad butch back. So, lads living the best life, getting all this in. And we have jacked up the tunnel. Look at that. It's like a mirror finish, man. Uh, you see, we jacked up there sort of four or five inches. You can literally walk down the old thing, slapping it. And I'm hitting that pretty damn hard. Look at that. Ooh. So, literally, just got these two front bits here to do. Let's go. Okay, so, polytunnel has been jacked on all sides. <laughs> boing, boing, boing. Loving life. Uh, as I explained earlier on, Apply wall the sheeting uh, on the walls. Obviously, you just acts uh, as the same as normal insulation does. This is far cheaper because the deal that we've got off the timber merchant. Um, some serious amount of graft and labour has gone into this farm. Front's been pulled in now. That's all nice and tight as well. And obviously, we've had both uh, front left and front right ponds uh, fiberglass as well. Uh, we're going to mix the screed up floor on here tomorrow, but that's going to be its own little video. So the window needs to be cut out what we did yesterday as discussed is uh, we made the framing go to where we're actually going to chop all this out today uh, me and the lads have just been getting on with the tape work uh, just seaming up all of the joints so big thanks to uh, Scouse Dino uh, for sorting the tape out for me thank you very much brother uh, and then the floor we're actually going to go ahead and get that screened in today because me and Ash are going to be fiberglassing this in the week um, We've mixed the screed up. What we've done is we've done a three to one mix on sharp sand, uh, mixed through with cement. So this has just got the natural moisture uh, that's inside of the sharp sand at the minute. Uh, but once we've actually pulled it all across, we will actually go ahead and spray it all down with the hose uh, in order to be able to do it. Typically what we do is we'd use these buttons here, these two big ones, we place them down. Uh, but because as you can see on the bottom here, we only need to come to sort of uh, three, four mil. We're going to come from around half an inch on the outside uh, down to that sort of three, four mil finish. Um, so there's not a lot of screed to go in this one. The one at the back, we will definitely need uh, to put some guides down simply due to the fact that obviously here needs to be built up in the middle uh, at about sort of three inches. So we're going to go from sort of like an eight inch on the side all the way down to nothing because that's how the brick left the old one. And that is how we've left the other one. So, big trev was over. Uh, obviously, block work is incredible. Um, super tight uh, on the mortar bed, nice and even and uniformed. The folio of the tunnel, still drum tight, which is, which is awesome. And as you can see, the sun's beating down and you can literally see the color grade difference now of how tight that is all the way over. Uh, so the floor, Yoss, we were saying we were originally gonna build it up. Yeah. Sort of four blocks high, weren't we? But we're gonna need to sort of double that in essence. It will be difficult, and for us, we can have a good look inside the percent. But anybody that's one that's more than us will look more like, oh, where are they going? <laughs> so, it's you it. have to get a little bit higher. So, but it's a nice view anyway. So, at the front, you will have the lower level as what you calculated before, and then some nice step here, one or two steps up to look everything into the percent. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a nice view. Okay, so. Spark is back today. Lights went up the top. We're just down here at the minute putting the uh, the boards in for the back. And uh, me and Big J are just cladding the outside of this because we need to be able to put the uh, the sockets in it, mate. Sockets, yeah. So this is for the sockets. So we're using the 4 by 2 as a guide for in the middle. And then we're going to put another piece over the top, mate, and overlap it like yours, yeah? Is that right? absolutely bang on with that um we've got all these set now uh, and in level we need to dig through for where the bottom drains are going to go today uh, in here uh, and then straight through the side um this here has now all gone off which is really good um we just need to get some turbo it is in here to dry it out and then on the weekend we've got uh both fiberglasses coming so both fiberglasses coming um so yeah walking and rolling let me set max in a second once we've had this let's go Okay, so this is basically 
uh, how the cladding's going to look. We have got to put another strip uh, over here just yet, but I'm just waiting for Ash to cut me down some more. Um, what I've been doing to actually get the clad on is you can see here where I messed this one up. Um, I come a little bit too close to the edge. So what I'm doing with the nail gun is I'm putting it on a bit more of a uh, slight angle like that. Then we're plowing it through on the sides. So we're nailing through twice there, twice in the middle and twice at the floor. But already, as you can see, there's a lot of people concerned about the whipping and the bowing. That ain't going anywhere. Don't forget yet, we've still got a concrete in the floor, which again, we're going to come up a little bit higher than the uh, actual fiberglass on the bottom. Uh, but that is going absolutely in. nowhere. Like, literally nowhere. Uh, on the front edge, we are going to put some uh, round posts in on the front here. Uh, go ahead and secure those down and then carry on with the clad. Uh, big jail make sure that the uh, round posts that go in will actually finish off square and plumb. So let's uh, get to cracking and rocking around with this because then we've got to clad this front bit here so again we can get the sockets on and stuff like that. Later on this afternoon I'm going to go ahead and get my pipe work. Uh, I need to dig this out because Lee backfilled it yesterday without realising that there was an upstand pipe there. So I need to take that out uh, and refill that. And I uh, patched the hole. That Lee dropped a piece of uh, 4x2 through. That's not actually a split there at the top. It's just this bit here, but we need to patch the outside a little bit later on. So we just need to go ahead uh, and patch the outside. Uh, the spark is nearly done with his board up there, and then obviously we can go ahead and test the lights. Are these twin LEDs, did you say, Jay? Yes, mate. Yeah, so these are twin LEDs up here. So we've had them situated above the ponds, uh, and obviously we'll have to have the sparky back when we've got the... Um, the Koi Spectrum lights uh, hanging down over the top of the ponds and stuff, so we've made sure we've got enough spares on the board, but we'll uh, go through the Sparky uh, in a short while, so just so we can explain exactly how we've done that. Let's go. Okay, so you see we've boxed in the uh, two supporting posts there in the middle. Uh, we've dug them about a foot and a half in the ground. So that takes all the, uh, all the stretch out, and then gonna go ahead and run the cladding all the way down the front. Uh, Spark is just putting in the, uh, the plugs over there and obviously he's hid the wiring all throughout the back there which looks really neat and smart. Um, we've got our other plugs going behind the back of here and going behind the back in the corner. All the, uh, all the lighting in. So looking, uh, looking really, really good. Um, but yeah, we're looking an absolute treat. Obviously we've got all the lads in here fiberglass in on the weekend. So hopefully all these all all these back two uh, and these two, once the screw's gone off in the bottom of here, are all done. And again, we can go ahead and uh, fiberglass the floors in here as well. Probably got another 15, 20 loads uh, of chippings to go in. Uh, I've intentionally, this bit of the pipe, obviously, as you can see there, is concreted in. I've intentionally left this bit out here just so I can make sure that it stays level. Um, we're literally just building up that wall there. Uh, and round the back as you can see in this bit down here so we can go ahead and concrete all that in uh, then we'll go ahead uh, put some more chippings in there uh, then we'll go right ahead and screed uh, I am going to put my returns uh, in here so I'm going to have the first two one in here and one in here one down the bottom there and one down the bottom there so the current is flowing that way hits the back wall and then loops back down on itself obviously forcing the fish to swim in that straight direction, uh, very similar to what uh, Lee Hadfield's done. Uh, same again on this one, just tested the pipe size, it is long enough. So, tomorrow, uh, again, pretty much where the halfway point is on here, put the bottom drain in, dig through. Uh, we've got the multi tool on the bottom bit there to get through the uh, cladding posts that we've gone ahead and put on the outside. But I really like the way those uh, gunmetal grey sockets look uh, on there, and again, both uh, plumb and in situ. We then need to pick uh, the line across here, uh, obviously for where our cable is going to go. And obviously this cable in here is going to be hidden in there like so. When we put our next cladding board on the front, you, you won't actually see any of that cabling at all, to be fair. Um, a lot of fiberglassing to do. Obviously these fiberglass packs are coming an absolute treat. If anybody is after a fiberglass pack, please reach out and let me know. We have gone through an awful, sorry, I'm just trying my legs. Uh, we have gone through an awful lot of these fiberga fiberglass packs this year. Uh, as I mentioned previously, any of the dry goods, fiberglass packs, treatments, medication, food, and stuff like that moving forward are only collection only. Uh, just until we get this place off the ground, spreading ourselves far too thin, so I don't want to let you guys down or anything like that. So if you do need anything, feel free to pop down. 
Um, but yeah, really, really, really looking forward to getting this tunnel finished off and completed. Thursday, 23rd of February, ready for Ice's Cool Farm. Concrete allowed me face. As you can tell, sweating buckets inside the tunnel. All goes towards that weight loss, so let's go. Uh, let me spin you around, show you what we're doing today. So, picking up from where we left off uh, last time round. Uh, just picked up that back edge a little bit more, just to make sure it's all nice and plumbing level. Uh, and I've just gone ahead. Um, obviously, this here is all concreted until this point. Uh, and then I've just put the post creek down there now, just to sort of hold that there in place, give a nice cap all the way around. Give that an hour now to go off, uh, even though it said it sets within uh, five to ten minutes. We're going to give it a solid hour. Um, just literally squeeze it over the pipe to create that cap there so it can't physically lift itself out of the ground. Uh, then what we're going to do is go ahead, move uh, these top, these uh, chippings, spread them all around, get the wacker plate in, wacker plate it nice and smooth. Um, and then we're getting ready for the screed coming in. So literally just gone ahead and ordered the uh, best part of 50 bags worth of cement to go with this porky tunnel screed. You can literally see the steam coming off me. I'm not even smoking, look, one hand's there. Other hands there. It's literally the steam coming off me. Um, we're looking good. Looks a lot better in here now. All this here has been sort of filled in and stuff like that. So it's looking absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm just going to carry on screwing the rest of this into play and then we're going to crack on and do the next one in there. Let's go. Okay, it's a bit of a loud snapback. Just whack a bait in here now. These shippings obviously avoiding this middle trench here, which is where the pipe work is. But at least then, when we're putting the screed down on top shortly, we can go right ahead and actually mix that through without having to worry about the ground moving or anything like that. Bosh! She's in on whack plated ladies and gentlemen. Let's go! Now, to exactly the same again. Another 20 ton got to go in there. A money what? I look like a minion, don't I? Which is basically where we're going to be cladding on the outside. Yeah. So that's an SDS drill. That's for to drill it Yeah. That's for to drill the screws into there. That is correct. So we've got Ian Endres over the back there doing his thing with the staple gun, living his best life. Me and Big Jane, you get this one on though. There he is. A lot of people called him the most handsome bull of all time, mate. You want to see the comments you've been getting, mate? Beautiful, let's go! I currently note the kids are both sprinting towards the digger, including Brooklyn, because Big Jay's promised them they can go up on the digger. So they'll be very well behaved today, helping us clear everything. See ya. Got a wide angle lens so you can see it all. Still got a shave in all that bank and that, yes. So they've been absolutely brilliant today, the kids have. Jay says Coco first because he's out in today. Oh 
Okay, so Reefer Oasis coming for them. Uh, at some point in March, I'm not giving you the exact date. Um, QT fish doing very, very well. Uh, they've just had our first mix. A lot of you will see it as uh, FMG, but it's not. Uh, it's what we've formulated to uh, knock back a hell of a lot of parasites, including gillfoots and skinfoots. Uh, so it's a culmination of various different things. Please don't ask me what I use, I'm not going to tell you because then I am responsible for uh, any dosing issues that you guys have with your ponds. Let me spin you around and quickly show you how, how well these guys are doing now. So this here is uh, the second day on our uh, ROKF treatment. That's reefer away to screw form, for those of you who wanted. Um, so I need to do a 20% water change today. Day three, another ROKF. Day four, 20% water change. Day five, another treatment of ROKF. Day six, 80% water change. So looking really, really good. However, today's job, um, He's just literally filling this bad boy up. I've put my two end pieces, uh, my two Valteras on there. Uh, so they're looking good. Uh, there's a reason why that that's that angle. It's not that I've not done it uniform or anything like that. It has to be done that way. And then this here is starting to fill up nicely. Um, obviously we've salt scrubbed the bottom so where you can see it's going white there. This is basically where we've wiped it all down afterwards with the salt and stuff like that. Uh, no styro leaching here or anything like that, but again, we will use the suicide fish um, But we'll get in in a second and start scrubbing down the floor so it's nice and uh, Nice and clean for when the fish go in again, we've got our two Valteras on there I need to move uh, these tubs here and then I need to get some measurements for our custom filter bay That's actually going to sit in here. So we're rocking and rolling on that front Outside we are fitting two UVs today so we fit one on the back pond and we're about to fit another one onto the front pond so when I say front pond I mean basin number one uh, which is this one over here let me spin you around and show you that so again as you'll notice obviously we're not quite covered over yet um, but we're starting to go a real nice kind of pea soup colour uh, doesn't seem to affect the fish or anything like that they seem happy as Larry uh, again, readings are absolutely sublime on here, but what we want to do is just make sure it's nice and crystal clear. I don't know what you're jumping up for, guys. There's no food gone in yet. We'll feed you in a little bit. Uh, but some of these, again, are going to be in our pick and mixes. There's some fantastic Hyatt series in here. I mean, really, really incredible Hyatt series. So, as it stands at the moment, obviously, we're coming through off the four inch onto the Valterra, and we are on this one at the moment purging into here. Now, what we're going to be using on this one is the Superfish Alltech UV uh, 75 watt. The reason why we're going for these is not just because we had them on special offer, um, but the outlet is actually a triple way. So you can feed in here through the bottom and you can decide to feed on, out on this one, this one, or this one. So when this goes on here for us, what we're going to do is come straight in off a two inch connector and then we're gonna go all the way through we're going to blank off these two pieces here uh, and then we're actually going to go ahead and use this one here as our exit return straight into the air source heat pump. So as you can see on there at the moment it's 12 in 12 out. Uh, obviously this has been off um, for a few hours this morning whilst I was doing a little bit of maintenance on this pond. Um, but rocking and rolling, I mean air source heat pumps, yes the flow is reduced and stuff like that but doesn't necessarily uh, hinder what we're trying to do but let me go ahead and get this uh, UV set up on here and then we'll go ahead and jump on the digger and start pulling this bit back here again another day in the life of but you love to see it let's go so we missed that then Ian what, what, what was it you said then I've given blood to this place now look see what I mean welcome to it's the club serious, mate man. welcome to the club <laughs> <laughs> what Pops and Ian doing the thing, so we've got the uh, first step in, just another two more to build. Uh, me, Kane, and uh, John Thompson are going to be cracking on the set, so John's brought over his um, drop saw as well. Uh, so both John and Ian are super organised and both got dust bags on there. Um, see me, I'm just winging a prayer it all the time. So what's the plan, John? You're putting them up close together and then using them as a guide? Yep. I'll hold this end.
So while John does that, I'm going to quickly show you the fish in regulation 23. We shot the pump over yesterday. And they are looking mega. There's some nice series in here, some uh, fantastic karashi boys as well. Uh, just keeping the whole system cycled through. But it's working in absolute dream. We would eventually get the full spectrum lights on here. So if you're watching Paul, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But yeah, these are looking good. I'll come back in here a little bit later on and uh, we'll give these bad boys some food. Because uh, I do need to scoop off that K1 uh, that's on there. But that was from when we swapped the pump over yesterday. So we put a smaller pump on to uh, help reduce the fines. Uh, nothing in here because it just didn't work. So we'll take this out and Danny's going to come back over and collect that. Um, but John's marrying all them up for the time being. And then, yeah, we're uh, back and rolling in here. Oh, guys, it's been a busy old day. You've been helping, haven't you? Yeah. Do you want to explain what we've been doing before we show them? Okay. Uh, so, we have uh, made some steps and, like, a decking. We're making some more decking. Yeah. Soon. Maybe today or tomorrow. But so far, it's gone great. So, shall we show them? Go on, then. To the maiden voyage, you giving up with him? Maiden voyage? So, steps are all in, perfect head height, I'm 6'1", absolutely uh, spot on. Uh, floor's looking absolutely tremendous, going to give it a sand back yet. Um, obviously this will be fully biosecure by the time it comes to opening. Um, so we'll have uh, foot slips and stuff like that to go on. Uh, and we'll have a big, big dip pad uh, just outside the doors there. Um, it's so much easier though to see the coin, especially being sort of this high up. Um, obviously this has got nothing in it yet. I'll put an extra little uh, kick strip on the front here. Um, just so when I put my flat piece across there uh, of 6b1, it marries up on the end there and we can actually put that in nice and tight. I'm going to put a, a couple more screws in there just to help pile that in. Um, these are going to be used for actual tank divides that we've got to build yet in time for open days. So there'll be one size fish here, one size fish here, uh, one size fish in here, and then another size fish in here. Um, fish at the back are doing really, really well. Uh, so they're looking absolutely fantastic and just getting ready to put the filtration on the back down there tomorrow. So yeah, we are rocking and a rolling folks. Um, looking really, really good. Some fantastic Stuart series in here. Look at that. And we do not edit the imagery of the fish or anything. The quality literally speaks for itself. Absolutely incredible. A quick little panoramic shot down there. Baffy showers working an absolute treat. Uh, uh, for opening weekend, we might actually lower the bassins this low because it's far easier to see all of the fish, catch all of the fish and stuff like that. It's a hell of a lot of media in there, um, hell of a lot of oxygenation and stuff like that. So obviously we'll take the fridge bottle out because by that point we won't be uh, using it as a hillbilly fridge. However, tomorrow is the day where we complete this. So 6B1 noggins, so I've got obviously Big J tonight. Uh, so 6B1 noggins, this one will run lengthways, which means the, these 6B, sorry, the 6B2 noggins will run lengthways, which means the 6B1 that we've got on the floor here um, will actually run that way. So again, we are using the uh, Yoshiki U Pro or Kiyu Mizu. Uh, obviously these are the older tubs. Got some left over from the back end of last season. But again, some wicked, wicked coin here. Move it over so you guys can see properly. Uh, again, I've got to go through, I've got to grade these before opening, uh, but some of these are going to be uh, the ones that are in for the five for 80 pounds. Um, and again, water quality looking absolutely fantastic. Some absolutely fantastic coin here. Good. Literally amazing, amazing koi. We've got koi for everybody, all different shapes and sizes. I mean, look at that kahaku there. Lovely, lovely Azuma kahaku there, all the way through. Perfect lightning bolt. Okay, so T minus three days until grand opening. Uh, fish are looking phenomenal. You can probably hear 
A little bit of soaring in the background. So let me spin you around and show you exactly what we're doing. Let's go! So many of you may notice the man, the myth, the legend. So we've got a call that's come over to uh, do a bit of a brand deal on some of his uh, pipe works uh, that he's got, which we'll touch on that a little bit later on. But what we're doing today, he's just literally fitting in the uh, the Filtro uh, drum filter. Um, so we've got some, uh, some new pipe work to be talking about. So Carl's actually gone ahead and set himself up. Um, it's quite a large hole side now. So uh, pit pressure pipe, aptly named after his daughter. Um, so this one is eight bar of pressure, 116 psi. So this is the one inch pipe uh, that we're going to need to take a feed off the water pump. It's going to go up into the back uh, of the filtro drum filter. Um, but on the returns, uh, he's actually got some two inch pressure pipe. Now the two inch pressure pipe is white. Um, so our American uh, compatriots that watch the channel, obviously you guys will be very, very familiar with uh, two inch pipe. Let's wait to finish you in there. So our Americans will be very familiar with the two inch uh, white pressure pipe. It's a standardized color over there. It's exactly the same as the gray, which obviously you can see that we're using the, uh, the gray down here now. But it's literally just the color difference. But for the color difference and the money, uh, that you guys at home can save uh, is absolutely astronomical but we will do a little bit of a piece on that with uh, Carl in the not so distant future um, but it's got his own range of uh, ball valves as you can see here own range of Valteras uh, four inch connectors two inch one inch straight connectors the whole shebang and I'll be sounding a little bit of a play around with them and I can absolutely 110 percent assure you they are absolutely bulletproof uh, I have had these on my Nexus for a while now, let me show you this. So this one here is one of Carl's, uh, we've had that on a hell of a long while now, just uh, kind of testing it out, it's been doing fantastically well. And we're also now stockist of his uh, MySeal pond sealant as well, so uh, stay tuned for that one because we will be using that on another build. But for the time being, let's get cracking with his pipe work and then once we've done that, uh, Carl can give us a little bit of a talk through and a walk through on uh, his pipe work. And, uh, where he's looking to be in the UK market. We will have some pipe work here for an open day as well. We'll have things like this, four inch unions. Um, so obviously you can then reuse your, uh, your pressure pipes and stuff like that. So these typically are used to connect two four inch pieces of pipe together, or they go on the front of your drums and stuff like that as well. Uh, all these ball valve lines, everything will be here. Come open day, so again, some absolute bargains to be had. Unfortunately, Carl's not here. His wife's decided to have a birthday on our opening weekend. I oh, know, God forbid she's allowed a birthday. Um, but yeah, it will be absolutely fantastic. So super duper pleased to be doing this brand deal, uh, which is absolutely awesome. So yeah, more details to come following that. Let's go. Okay, so Carl's just dry fitted everything for me. Uh, I've now got ahead and uh, welded it all in. Obviously this is only a temporary system for the time being, which is why we've uh, not got the purges on there, but we've got a fedding, a two four inches at the top. Uh, reason for that is so the flow going in uh, it's the same and then obviously we've got the blanking cap off the bottom there if we do go ahead uh, and put any more skimmer in there a little bit later on then obviously we will go ahead and use that but for the time being I'm just going to come out of one return on here I've got to blank this one off so one return will come out onto uh, two inches and we'll have a 40,000 litre per hour pump on there which again in turn will then we want to draw out no more than 30,000 uh, on here but it's got to go ahead now set up the header tank set up the pump that I was going ahead and rebuilt there um, so I'm going to get some bends up onto that but yeah let me go ahead now and get that on there let's go okay so it's definitely a little bit too hot to be wearing a jumper in here I have just been shirtless for the past half an hour but obviously you guys don't want to see me shirtless on video uh, the filtro um, is in uh, that back pond is filling up uh, just ordered some new uh, pond air pump so I thought I'd just throw in uh, a cheeky little unboxing in this one as well because I was actually quite surprised I didn't read the side of the box and I just literally opened it up so as you know we're big advocates of Cocky Koi down here at Reef Oasis Koi Farm there's a jumper name underneath if you don't know where um, so I ordered well let's go back I ordered some bits of Cockney Koi I've got uh, an original high blow 40 the diaphragms have gone I've just put a little short up on YouTube 
about that now, about me repairing it and showing you how simple it is. So I'm moving the Hobo 40s onto the two Eric's and, and then I'm running these two uh, Yamatsu 120 litre per minute pom pumps um, on the two Nexuses. Because the two Nexuses are standard, they come with 100 litres of media and 18 litres inside the uh, easy part in the middle. However, because the stock intensities and the growth rates that I want on these guys, I'm actually running uh, 250 litres of K1 in the outside rings. So obviously I need the bigger air pump in there. Now I've added that extra uh, biomedia in there to actually continue to elevate them through. So I was talking to Lynn at Cocky Coy, fantastic lady by the way, if you're watching Lynn, big love. Um, and, and I ordered the, the Hoibo uh, 80s. And uh, she says, why don't you look at the Yamatsu 120s because they're cheaper and you get a load of spare parts with it. And I didn't think anything of the whole, you get loads of spare parts with it. So I was like, yeah, okay, cool. Send me two of those out. So I ordered those, paid for them. They arrived this morning. Uh, and literally, when I unboxed the just, I thought, wow, they might have just replaced the original diaphragms out of here. Check this out. So this is a pond box. Fish looking mega. Got to grow through them in a second. Um, but yeah, this is it here. So specifically going for ponds, large aquaria, uh, fish breeds, etc. High volume, 120 litres per minute. Low noise, high airflow. And I completely missed this part here on the side of the box. Star bumps warranty, wicked. Rubber joining piece of two clips, wicked. 33 weight combi manifold, wicked. Two spare diaphragms. That's the bit that got me. When I opened the box, it literally comes with two of the spare diaphragm outings and the diaphragm rubbers on the inside. Now, it's a hell of a unit. You get your... Uh, Rubber hose clip adapter, which again is far better um, than these little flexi pieces that you get on here. As you can just see there, the pressure on that has literally just blew that off. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, the pressure on these high blow 40s, because they're tested two meters underwater, the, the, the bubble aeration that you get is incredible. And bearing in mind, I'm only actually running four gangs on there and there's six. So these Yamatsus look pretty darn good. Now, I'll tell you what, I can't do this one-handed. Let me snap back to you in a second. So, this is the beast in question. So, not only do you get two of your outer protectors, you also get two of your uh, rubber diaphragms as well. Now, look at this for an air gang. It is massive. Literally. So, you've got 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, uh, 33, 33 airlines, man, we can attach onto the front of this bad boy. And this literally kicks into the end of that lock, so, and away you go. Oh, that is ludicrous, man. So, let's get this bad boy pumped in. I'll show you the inside of here in a second, so I can actually show you how much the bubble rate is. And then I'll show you a side-by-side -side comparison in regards to how this bad boy Rip a ruse through that. Let's go. Oh, before we do that, by the way, John Dunn ordered me some new microphones. If there's any YouTubers out there that look at the microphones, they literally clip onto the front like that, and they're absolutely wicked. I've been using them on the videos all the time recently. They're incredible. Plug into your iPhone and away you go. Anyway, enough of me waffling. Let's plug this in. Let's go. Okay, so this uh, air pump here is the Jackod Eco Air Pump 80. Now, as you can see, a nice frivolous boil across the top but we're getting a little bit of dead spots here so let's swap this out and let's put the next one on so this is what it runs like with the jacket on and now let me show you what it runs like with the uh, yamatsu one on that is what it's like with the uh, 120 on so it's a hypho 120 but it actually outputs uh, 140 um, liters a minute now that is absolutely ripper roaring in. Now, the evolution aqua pipe literally fits straight inside there. And there's still a bit of an air leak on there, as you can see there. There'll be the noise difference. So let me go ahead and tape that up. But I have to say, I am damn impressed. And the pricing is far superior to the likes of the evolution aqua one. Hit me up in the comment section down below if you want some pricing on these, and we will add them to the new website. Um, but yeah, I'm super, super impressed with that. I really, really am impressed with it. 
So it is clean though. But let's whack that on and see how well the bubble is on there. Jesus Christ. Look at that. Yes. That is seriously impressive. Like seriously, seriously impressive. Definitely a recommend on that. This is not a sponsored video either, by the way. Look at the frigging bubble on that, man. Job's a fish. Let's go. Okay, so high blows swapped onto the uh, Eric Multivise. So they're working really, really well now. Uh, so that one's going too big. Uh, Cotton Coys, uh, everybody rock and roll on there. These are a big water change today, so I can actually get in and start regrading some of these floating baskets. We've already got a fantastic variety of uh, ghost anchors in there. Um, so yeah, now it's time to plug in the one over the back that I put just there. Feed the wires into here, and then the Evolution Aqua, that's gonna sit here. Uh, it's gonna feed this pond, oh. The Evolution Aqua that's there, sorry. He is going to situate here and it's going to be this one and uh, it's going to be that one. Uh, but like I say, the back one's just filling up at the moment. We have already got the cycles, uh, 350 litres of K1 for that. That's going to be going on here. So, yeah, rocking and rolling, folks. Let's go. Woo. Wow, 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 wow. What an opening weekend it was. Uh, absolutely incredible. Very, very humbled by the amount of people that come down. The gifts, I've got the Baldy Pro uh, head shaver off my mate Heidi. Uh, we've got the Backy Shower um, of one of my subscribers. Um, Carl actually goes ahead uh, and manufactures them themselves as well, which is fantastic to see. Um, we also had various different bottles of champagne brought down, so thank you very much indeed for that. Uh, I'm trying to, you know, watch the figure at the minute and all that jazz, so uh, they'll be uh, coming out in due course. But, just want to give a few more thanks to everybody that came down that showed mad amounts of love, mad amounts of support. It was so, so, so very humbling. So I just thought I'd show you what I've been doing in the aftermath, really, and uh, getting prepped and ready for uh, the Friday Night Live auction, which is tomorrow, because this video actually lands this evening. Uh, and also just another run through uh, of these Yamatsu air pumps, because they are absolutely insane. Let me spin you around though and show you some of the fish. Let's go. Okay, so fish-wise, these don't all think they're about to get fed, even though they've just been fed, uh, but looking fantastically well um, in the vats. Uh, these guys here, again, doing absolutely superb that we had on the uh, the 5 for 80s, and then we've got some of our bigger tosso uh, in here as well, which we're going to be actually taking some of these out of here uh, to actually pop into our bowling station that we've got just there. Uh, and again, some of our smaller stuff. Um, again, we've had a little bit more of a mix through since the weekend and we have got some bigger bigger koi in here. Uh, and then coming over to this back one, I've already got some of the uh, the auction fish in the green basket floating just there. Uh, but some amazing, amazing koi in here that I actually want to go ahead and take out, for example, one of the tanchos just there. Okay, so this is like the little prequel before the actual end bit because I was just talking to my pops and he said, why don't you do like a little bit of a giveaway? So what I want to do is, because the channel's grown exponentially, I was going to give away a fish, but that limits us pretty much to the UK market. So what I want to do is basically give away one of our Reef at Oasis Koi Farm uh, soft shell jackets. These are only normally exclusive for staff, which is why I'm only going to do the one. All you've got to do is literally comment in the video and just put, wow, what a journey, uh, or include, wow, what a journey, somewhere in there. Um, so yeah, that's literally all you've got to do. Hit me up in the comment section at, at any point during your, your comment or anything like that, as long as you include, wow, what a journey, um, then you are included within the giveaway. Uh, we will do a draw um, with on the next live stream, which is in four weeks time. Um, so I will then come back to this video and comment to the winner to drop me an email um, so we can actually get your address and ship it. This also includes for international customers as well and international subscribers. Let's go. So there you have it. That is literally 12 months pretty much to the day. Um, absolutely incredible the amount of love and support that i've had over the past 12 months uh, and that's a video that i definitely needed to put together because it seems like i've been up here for sort of like forever and a day but 
it's literally been like 12 months and four days at this point and it's mental how far uh that i've come the channels come the farms come the business come we've come as a community uh so thank you all everybody that's appeared on the video thank you ever so much for all of your help and all of your support i would not be able to do it uh without you all standing behind the back of me uh, and helping me get this place off the ground. Obviously, we're getting very, very close now to getting these tunnel tunnels covered uh, with the brand deal that we're putting together there. So yeah, it's uh, it's been one hell of a journey. Plenty, plenty more to come. But hit me up in the comments section down below. It's crazy to see how how far I actually pushed this farm without a true plan in place, and how much it actually came together once we got that that plan. So yeah, now it's about thinking about things three times just to make sure that they are right before we actually go ahead and do them. Uh, and a lot of learning curves made along the way as well. Um, it, it's amazing to see how much more knowledge and, and, and growth has come and how much I've actually really slowed down uh, in regards to sort of thinking things through before I jump ahead and do them. And that's definitely something I've got to carry on into the 2023, 2024 season. Hell of a journey hell of a journey still ahead of us but i am absolutely loving it stay safe stay sane most importantly people stay happy balding reefer out